But what's cooking up over on the stage is pretty darn spicy. I'll tell you that for free. The number one seed from the East Asian region takes on the number six seed from EMEA. Zeta Division One goes up against Chasmac Gaming EU. Zeta Division One. I mean, we've got to start there. I mean, what a phenomenal team. I and mean, they've just been so dominant all year long. Chasmac, it's definitely fair to say, are a bit of the underdog in this series. But again, that's not to count them out. They've had some good promise and they've made some good adaptation along the journey. Zeta Division around last year's World Championships, they split the team, right? They they take Stitampo, an all-star player out, and they build around him. And that has looked incredible so far, of course, bringing in Kenji and Moya Goku. But let's not waste too much time. Let's head down to the stage and welcome out the first of our competitors. Et allez, c'est l'heure, c'est le moment pour notre premier match du week-end. 16 équipes, beaucoup d'action sur Brawl Stars. Mais quoi de mieux pour commencer que d'accueillir les mastodontes de la compétition. Ils font partie des grands favoris de cette compétition. Ils nous viennent du Japon. Un tonnerre d'applaudissements pour Zeta Division 1 Last year's world champion, Shitambo joined this year by Margoku, Kenji, Walzaita, dominating again. The list of achievements is endless. MSI champions of 2022, six grand final appearances, four grand final wins. Stout Dragon Pro Series champions, the APEC region take the stand. And that is indeed a terrifying prospect in itself. March. April, August, October, monthly finals champions. Like I said, only ever losing to Zeta Division Zero in those tournaments. This team's got some pretty insane win rates. The MSI, of course, champions uh, beating SK 3-2 in that grand final. This team has it all. What a treat to get our probably favorite team to take the stage so early in the tournament. And their opponents are definitely the David in this David versus Goliath situation. Let's now welcome them to the stage. Et leurs adversaires du jour, ce sont les challengers. Ils viennent d'un pays qui n'a jamais été représenté dans des finales mondiales de Brawl Stars. Trois joueurs polonais qui vont venir challenger ceux qui sont les grands favoris de ce tournoi. S'il vous plaît, un max de bruit pour Chasma Gaming EU They are the first ever Polish players to compete in the World Finals. And Roma, Naui and Gero, Coach Philip, hoping to do their country proud. They made the Grand Finals once this year in the EMEA region, back in April, losing a match point, match point to Tribe Gaming EU by a singular bounty star. They are considered by many as the underdog in this matchup, but if they can prevail as the top dog, it will send a shockwave throughout the arena. This team has had some pretty solid performances over the last couple of months, but there's no doubt about it, Ark. They started on the right foot at the beginning of this year, and then they started to run into a little bit of trouble. Gero comes and joins this team, and Rama believes that he really helps them and allows them to deepen their pool of strategies and increase their communication. This team qualified as Craze Clan and were picked up instantly by Chasmat Gaming Europe, who wanted a representative from that EMEA region. This team has got a lot on their plate right now. They're coming as at number six seed, but again, the EMEA region arc is so competitive. Even at number six, you can't be sleeping on this team, and I'm sure that Zeta Division One aren't either exactly that it really is the case and you know with a lot of you know, background history and dominance in the scene comes a lot of stress a lot of responsibility to maintain and obviously a fan following to please but chasmat gaming today they come in with less of that strain and that weight on their shoulders and if they can get these drafts right you know and have done their homework in that respect to see through the cracks and the weaknesses that may be within State of Division 1 here today, then they could cause a potentially catastrophic upset. Hearing from Zeta Division 1, they said, look, Chasmak EU's a strong team, but we are confident of winning. That came from Ken G here. And you can't blame this team. They've been the best because they've beaten the best. In MSI, it was Team Keizo, then STMM with a 3-1 result. And as we mentioned earlier, a win against SK Gaming. It's not the first time the Zeta Division 1 team has been pitted against the rest of the world. For Chasmak, it is a baptism of fire. And again, if it goes wrong for them here, they're going home. But the scariest thing about Zeta Division 1 for me is the fact that their best performance was in October. 
Worlds. They didn't drop a single set, which means coming into the World Finals, they're at their peak, they're at their top, they're at their very best. And for Chasmat Gaming, it was a little bit of the opposite. You know, their best performance was back in April of this year. And, you know, they've had you know, a bit of a trying time, but they've had a little bit of a chance to breathe and reflect upon the year and to look back at where things didn't go quite so right for them. And I really hope that today we see a refreshed, a revitalized Chasmat Gaming at EU because, again, this matchup, I'm sure to many, may seem like that David and Goliath story. Sure. But if they can prevail and move forwards and, and leave Zeta Division 1 in the dust, I'm sure that going into other days, people will be looking upon this in a very different light. Again, this team, yeah, nine points was uh, what they managed to get into World Finals qualification with. Again, we have a lot of representatives from the EMEA region because it is considered widely uh, very competitive. There's a depth of talent on these particular teams. And again, like this team sort of believes that they benefited really greatly from our move this year towards a pick and ban system. They felt like that allowed them to get a good read on their opponents in terms of you know, what came out in that phase. And quite often we see teams go for a very cheeky pick. If they have that last pick, that pick number six, we get to see some really interesting strategies potentially bringing in tank when there otherwise wouldn't be any counters. They might be relying on that in some of these sets to get the drop on Zeta Division 1. My question is, just what kind of breadth of strategies have Zeta Division 1 been exposed to, been prepared for? How easy is it going to be, or rather how difficult, to pull the ball over this team's eyes? Because I get the feeling you had to get up pretty early in the morning to pull one over on Shitampo and his mates. Yeah, we were saying earlier, he can basically play brawl with his eyes closed, can't he? I mean, you know, with Zeta Division 1, it's a really interesting style to the draft because you are forced to make that decision of, do I want to ban the meta? Or do I want to ban what Zeta Division 1 are best with? And you know, that is, oh my word, Uber, 91% of those watching on event.brawlstyles.com think that Zeta Division 1 are going to take this one. We shall see. The draft comes in thick and fast. It is Kenji Moya, Goku, and Shitampo here to make the first pick for the side of Zeta Division 1. Again, we're going to be playing Knockout first. It's going to be out in the open. Again, a really curious map, right, because their left lane for both teams is kind of cut off unless you're playing Eve or something with that utility. Let's talk Brock, though. He's picked first. I love that pick. Breaking open the mid very early on with the rocket fuel and allowing your team to get really quickly into the map and in your lanes. Eve Band, I think it's a smart move there yep. by Chazmak, because ultimately that is a great brawler to have on those side lanes and one that has a lot of maneuverability around the lake area. The Fang Ban and actually State Division 1 banning Max for me is a real thing to point out because you know, a lot of what we saw in the last year's World Finals from Zeta was primarily utilizing Ooh. Max's speed. <laughs> Sharp shooters are all the flavor for Chazmak as Pipe is their first pick. Chazmak respect as well. That Otis Band is probably targeted at Shitampo, who often picks that one up in his reach and then looks absolutely frightening as a duelist. There's really not much you can do once you get muted by that super. So you can't ban all the sharpshooters. That is quite clear. Both teams have opted for pretty strong mids. Tick comes in as well, looking for a bit of map control to be picked up. Yeah, I quite like how this is shaping up so far for Chasmak, and now there's Division 1, a chance to respond. I, I do love the idea of Bell here. I think Bell is in a fantastic spot, or Penny. I think they're having something to apply some pressure, some control, like that Penny turret could go quite a long way here. But that tick is going to be vulnerable on the side of Chasmak as well. And they know that they've got ultimately a lot of the more aggressive brawlers which could counter it, banned out on the side of State Division. So again, it does show that Chasmak are showing some good signs of awareness and strategy. Carl coming in for Zeta. This, uh, I mean, this pick for Stitampo, he has not lost a set when he has picked Carl. He is six and zero when he's gone for that brawler. Fantastic mid range with also that all in potential that you love to see. I'm going to be looking out for that and Gene. I mean, this team composition looks nice and rounded out. Yeah, and those magic puffs on the healing side surely going to be coming into play big time then for Zeta if they find themselves on the ropes and in the back spawn. If Chasmak can get that early advantage in that high ground, then you know having some survivability is going to go a long, long way. Gus coming in, and this is one of those brawlers that I've seen in Zeta's scrims. They play Gus everywhere, so it's surprising to me that they've actually left it open and that Chasmak have seen that door and walked through it. Extremely powerful. Right now, we know that with that star power, uh, Gero is going to be able, or whoever's playing the Gus is going to be able to apply also that damage boost to whoever receives the shield. So in clutch moments, that's going to be absolutely crucial if he decides to go in that direction. But when there's Gene floating around, there's a sense of inevitability, right, Ark? That magic hand can be devastating. Absolutely so. And in we go. Zeta starting things out there, slow and patient and steady to win the race. The rocket fuel, I don't think, connected there, but the range is what's more important than keeping that at bay. But there's a great tap from Geru there. Kenji, very low. 
And I love this start so far from Zayt, just getting the positioning power over Chasmak. And now he actually takes health for Nancy here, so actually boost the healing of those spirits, favoring the sustain game a little bit more here for Chasmak. But you can see the pressure that Zeta Division 1 are applying early. They're building Moya Goku up towards that magic hand. They're looking just to break this game right open with that Gene Super. Yeah, they want to close the gap over time. Ultimately, that's where Piper is going to struggle in those later stages as the gas starts to come into play and close in on the map. So having the magic hand for later and just buying time to allow that situation to occur is going to go a long, long way. But I feel like Chasmak do need to get out of this one a little bit. The shield there popped and now he pushing forward oh! against the takedown on Kenji. The gadget activation there from now, it was huge. Oh! Yeah, that extra damage from the spirit and there it is, the magic hand, but Tinket's coming in. Boy, Goku's low. Spooky Ghost come out, but it's not enough. And Chasmak get one on the board early. Great stuff. This is what I wanted to see from Chasmak because they need to get some early momentum against this particular matchup. Let's see now, left-hand side lane, but look at the flying hook over the lane, because Chitapa goes in and Drama goes down. Beautiful stuff, and what a different game this is from the last one. Already a three versus two Zeta Division 1, now done playing nice. Moya Goku closes the gap, and that magic hand's available, but it won't be needed to take down Gero. A three versus one now, no, he has to try and hang on. They're baiting out that gadget activation, it feels, and it's a matter of time now. So hard to win from this position, Zeta, even it up. Yeah, smart for them to allow Kenji to pick up that kill as well, because he's trying to get that super as well. Everyone else already has theirs on the, on the board here, so... But what a great response, honestly. That is what is so scary about Zeta. They treat every round as if it's a fresh new one, and then great pull coming in. Oh, beautiful stuff there from Tampo making that early three versus two. A gas super shield not nearly enough to keep him alive. Poppet has to be used as Gero oh, tries to get away, but Tampo is relentless and Rama falls. Zeta Division 1 take that first round. It feels like Zeta took that first round personally and came back fighting. And that is what Chasmak have got to be so cautious around. They've got to make sure to just keep it slow and patient like they did in that first round. And I love it. You can just see the energy there. Shitampo just getting geared up and, you know, they can feel that first set potential there for them if they can just keep their selves going. It's the one thing about Chasmak's composition arc, they can struggle sometimes if they get dove on and that flying hook is big to allow Shitampo to advance some environmental uh, destruction here by Kenji and again, Zeta look to encroach. Gero yeah, was having a tough time on the left as Kenji really just utilizing a lot of that incendiary on the ground and it is going to restrict the movement, of course, as well. Now he's fitting in a little bit more into Moyogoku, who's going to be earning that magic hand shortly. But this is where we saw Chasmak in that first round really start to thrive. They just took their time. But I do like this position. It's a stronghold here for Zeta. That's going to keep Kenji quiet for a bit. Gero getting a lot of value out of that speed gear inside the bushes. Go. Forcing the magic puffs to come in, but Shitampo is closing the gap again. It might be time for the all-in. Now he's extremely low, trying to stay Shitampo up. It's going to be the tick head use, and Shitampa oh, gets on oh, out of dodge, and there's oh, the magic hand! What a connection! And there it is! Zeta Division 1, commanding start to this second round. As soon as one brick comes loose, the whole wall comes crashing down as Zeta really are starting to enjoy themselves. Their thumbs are now warmed up, and they can taste this set going their way, but can we see some resolve? Can we see something from Chasmak to be able to put a stop to this potential inevit inevitability here? Healing puffs much needed there. Going Moe Goku and just keeping everyone in the mix. Taking it slow and steady yet again and ready to explode surely in the near moment. Means you don't spend as much time out of the fight if you need to be topped up. Just get there by your gene and you'll be ready to rock soon. There it is, Flying Hawk. It's going to be the tailspin now. Rama in trouble. Last to ride, used to get him away, but he's low. 75 HP. Shitampa the first to fall, though. Now he comes to the rescue and Jasmak have a player advantage. Yeah, Rama's in a tough spot here, though, as well. But let's see. Oh, Beautiful. my word. Great play from Jasmak and Moe Goku goes down swiftly after. This is going to come down to a round. Against the Tampo, always going to be the one to take the risk there. Trying to go all in and get staved off. The Gus Super Shield, so crucial in moments like that. He's got another one available. Well, no more flying hooks. Just Tampo and that. I feel it's the strength of this Zeta comp. As soon as he goes in, that's when Chasmak gets stirred. But there's a lot of utility on the side of Chasmak that can't be denied, ultimately. A nice gush shield will go a long, long way here. Rama just keeping the ticket Ooh. in the mess. Pool could be costly. Yeah, that one pulls up a little bit short here. Shitampo realizes he can't go in, so he tailspins on his own side of the map. Moyagoku is going to have to take a sidebar, get himself top back up here as Chasmak have a chance to take some map control. Rama's got to stay alive here. 
They do not want to be at the disadvantage. Thoughts in this position. Chasmak are one round away from taking this game, and that would even things out massively. So they do not want to be one set behind here, not at all. Gero just going to keep hold of this super as well and just time it perfectly. Bravo, Bravo. is low. Okay, the last one just in time. And here's the thick head coming in. A lot of health on that, but it's still going to be removed. The gas now is going to begin to encroach. Oh. Shitapo's in trouble. He's pinched on there. Now he finds the kill, but it's going to be traded back. Rubber in the gas. He can't get out. Poppin has to be used as Gero as a last resort, but it's not going to be enough. And Zeta Division 1 start on the strong foot. This is where that experience really comes in to play, keeping that cool composure when much needed, because I've got to say, that was not nearly, I feel, as one-sided as many at home were thinking coming in. Shazmak really stood their ground, and I think they stood it well. Again, they've taken great opportunities to punish that aggression from Stitampo. We kind of know that's the that's the go signal. As soon as there's a magic hand that gets connected, Shitampo wants to follow it up there. You see, it works perfectly. He doesn't even have to go aggressive with that flying hook. Good energy here from Zeta Division 1, but I love the fight from Chasmak so far. This may not be nearly as one-sided, like you said, as we anticipated. Yeah, I would love to see a set be clawed back along the way here from Chasmak, because ultimately, it's a very difficult thing to stand your ground against a team like Zeta Division 1. You know, this is the first time that this team has been in the World Finals on the side of Chasmak, so to really make the most of this opportunity, they are doing that. I think they're performing really, really well. The pride of Poland giving a good account of themselves here in this first match so far. But Zeta Division 1 always a threat, always looking quite scary. Knockout there, uh, again, ends up being very, very close. You talked a lot about seeing Gus more so in Zeta Division scrims, right? Looks like they're not the only team that's started to pick him up and really get him involved. There's a lot of value you can get. And I love the, the gadget use, of course, blowing up those, uh, blowing up the ghosts there, able to get that extra damage if someone is too cocky and starts to walk over them. Good start here uh, from Chasmak, but it's going to take more than this, more than pluckiness to beat a team like Zeta Division 1. Yeah, this, this is the thing. And uh, you know, with Chasmak, they just got to shake off that defeat very, very quickly and just kind of treat things fresh. I think that you know, just a lot of the mentality that comes into play when you're faced off against a team like Zeta Division 1 is just believing that you can get the victory believing that you know, you're going up against someone that isn't Zeta Division 1 and just keeping it like that in your mind. And you know, a healthy mentality goes a long, long way in esports. Now, we're heading to Gem Grab next. It's one of Zeta Division 1's best maps. It's a 71% win rate over the course of their monthly finals appearances. So a map they're pretty comfortable on, but it's pretty native to many Brawl players here. And you expect Chasmak to have some ideas. Interesting to see the kind of Brawlers that we saw banned out in that first map, right? a lot of them were sort of map specific. A lot of them were like, you know, Otis is extremely powerful, right? Just not something that Chasmak seemed to want to deal with in general. We are moments away from heading, of course, into our second set here. Of course, Hard Rock Mine will be the battlefield. One of my favorites. It's a fantastic gem grab mode map to have and very, very balanced in that respect. Some it's chance. a classic, isn't it? It really is. It is. It's been around for such a long time and the players all love it. Those lanes are where the aggression is going to take form. So I like the stew ban for Chasmak there, but it does still leave the door wide open there for Rico to come in. It's normally an early pick, but not necessarily. That mid as well going to be an important decision. Who is going to be the gem carrier? Oh. Otis for Chasmak and they were banning it out in the previous set. So again, a very, very strong one, but this is where Zeta can really double down. You know, with that idea, I feel like 8-bit here works very, very well in the mid or something like a bell can get a lot of value also. Yeah, look, I, I love the Otis pick. He's a monster in one of those side lanes and Fat Splatter can also catch you off guard if you think you're safe hiding behind some form of cover and those deployables also can be removed by that. Both teams banning out the penny. By the way, no, no one really wants to deal with that. Salty Barrel has really turned her into so much more of a powerhouse now, really being able to be deadly at close range. Gus is going to be locked in straight away here for Zeta Division 1. You were right, Ark. You were anticipating to see this pick from them. It's going to be a tough one to face off against, honestly. And ultimately, you know, having the ability to pop the Spooky Popper and just have that additional damage from the ghouls on the map is going to be such a great thing for Zeta to have. And you know, the shield as well, just going to keep that survivability level high. And they do lack the aggression, though, and that is the thing, some control. I do feel like Rico would be the pick, but this is Zeta Division 1. They define the meta. It's going to be Carl yet again. They love that mid-range presence, of course. Shitampo can operate pretty comfortably on one of those side lanes and take those duels 
when he has to. I, I'd love to see if he uh, gets matched up here against the Otis and how that all plays out. But we see now scary he is. Again, his record speaks for itself, undefeated in sets on that pick, as I mentioned already. He's 7-0 now, so definitely something to look out for here. So how do you round out this composition for Chaz Mack? What are you looking out for? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I would like to see that recall on the side lane. I'm a bit biased because it is one of my favorite brawlers here on Hard Rock Mine, but uh, gem carrier-wise as well, they, okay, Max. Aggression. Like yeah, in a little bit. And it can work really well in the mid, which I assume is going to be the approach here for Chaz Mack. So they're going to be lacking in range touch if they do go with that idea. But ultimately, I think there's a wise decision to make. Ultimately, against a team like Sata Division 1, having that aggressive stance is what made them so successful in the World Finals last year. So, you know, putting themselves against, them, against themselves effectively. Gives them some disengage potential as well. If they see that flying hook actually thrown out, Shitampo start to approach here. There like it a back away, and you're a happy man now. I am. <laughs> again, the sustain that he can get from Bouncy Castle in that side lane as well makes him so frustrating to shift. And he can obviously damage you without exposing himself uh, to your more linear uh, attacks from brawlers. So great pick up here, Chasmac, with some powerful brawlers. I do love that rough span as well from Chasmac, because that's what I'm feeling would have been a great thing to have on the side of Zeta now. You know, having something of a wall breaker here would deflate some of that effectiveness, some of that controlling element that Rico brings on the side of Chasmac. And Gene is going to come in. And I do love that. I mean, it's very, very similar to what we've already seen demonstrated by Zeta, so they are going to be warmed up to it. And, you know, ultimately, there's a great amount of brawlers that can be effective in the mid here, but this is definitely an underrated mid on Hard Rock Mine. A lot of regions don't tend to use Gene here. What do you think so that I is? Do, I mean, in North America, they love Piper mid. In EMEA, they love you know, the sort of 8-bit and, and Bell mids, but I love the fact that Zeta are going back to roots, and this is something which I've been waiting to see for a very long time on Hard Rock Mine. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Hard Rock Mine. Our second set begins now. Already some salvos being exchanged through the middle part of the map here. Rama taking a little lower. Yeah, Gero's going to be an absolute <laughs> pain in the neck on that left-hand side. Well, the vision gear being run by Kenji as well as the Rico as well on the side of Chaz Mack, and that's going to help a lot. One single connection on any of those shots is going to keep that visibility layer there. But look at this, turning the sheep as Zeta are all clunged together in that bottom right-hand corner. But now, some feist, some fight back, and it's the exact opposite. Chaz Mack now, very much on the ropes. Now, Kenji able to pick up a couple of those gems here. Chaz Mack have a lead for the time being. You saw there, uh, you know, uh, the Otis just walked straight over one of those Gus Ghosts and get punished for it in that previous fight. And he, Shitampo really trying to collapse that side lane here, just move into those bushes. Definite map control here for Zeta Division 1. It's up to Chasmak to find a way to rest this back. Shitampo low, but there's the magic hand. Kenji at the damage boost, and there it is. Gero taken down. Now we try to get aggressive on that right side. It will be picked up. But Kenji fancies a bit of argy bargy himself. <laughs> I mean, Gero there really didn't quite cut the master, did he? I mean, just caught off guard, didn't connect the super, got pulled in with the magic hand. I think he missed the bouncy castle as well there, so definitely a bit of a miss, but still time to be able to redeem himself. The gems are split, by the way. Despite Zeta's oh. dominance and their aggressive playstyle, Shazmak are hanging on. Rama pops that super. He sees Shitampo get a little bit low. They do pretty well at dealing with him. They keep Rama alive, but again, that aggression allows Zeta to scale up their map control. Kenji now at eight gems. Rama's getting scrutinized here and has to heal up. And again, another missed connection there from Gera on that left-hand side. He does need to start to gain some of this utility and, and reduce the, uh, the, the HP there of Zeta now, who are on countdown. It's not going to be over just yet. They're in a good position to get a reset potential. Boy, Goku wants to attract as much attention as he can here. No eyes on Kenji for the time being. It's 10 to 6 in gems and now some pressure being placed on Kenji. Beautiful. He can't stay alive. Oh, oh, gets in oh. there. The Super's got to get him out as well. He's getting out of dodge. My word, Rama playing out of his mind. Beautiful stuff, the face shifter on point, the super to get away, but no, no, no. it's a reset. To oh. play reset. Oh! Now he comes back off spawn, though, and he's got 16 gems. Kenji doesn't have the mechanism to rest them back. Boya Goku having to play at range, but he's the only play left here for Zeta Division 1. The gems fall in enemy territory, and Chasmak gobbled them up. Boya Goku gets the takedown, but there's not going to be enough time. Beautiful stuff from Chasma in the still in the final hour. You've got to admire that resolve. You've got to have some stones to go in and clutch those gems up like that. Love that play. And we see that sometimes on gem grab, right? When you give too much of that map control up too early, you back yourself into a corner and you lose your horde. I've got to remind as well that the fact that 91% of viewers watching on eventofbrawlstars.com did think that Zeta were going to clutch this very comfortably, but this is not proving to be the case so far. 
but positioning power so far in the mid is there. Garu, oh, couldn't quite connect that last shot from Shitampu, who's incredibly low. The survivor ability of that man, my word. Shitampu is the blunt object here, right? Zayn Division 1 are swinging him at Chasmak every opportunity they have. But he has all the gems right now. Not the ideal gem carrier as someone who wants to be the aggressor, so he'll stay low in his own half of the map, but he's still alive. This is unreal. Walking the knife edge of Zayn Division 1. There's five gems in the pocket so far for Zeta, but they've got to get forwards and a great mute there from Naoi, the pick up there as well from Rama. Great stuff as now Chasma can, you can see their confidence, they're starting to get their flow and you know, Chas, you know, Chasma can just keeping Zeta back and that's exactly where they've got to keep them. In making sure their gems are dropped on their side of the map though, Zeta Division 1 have given up a lot of that map control. Shitampo's the one that should help them retake it, but he's carrying three oh. gems right now. Magic Hand's there with a face shifter for Rama. He gets a bit of shielding, six gems, and he's backing away. Chasmak are able to match this level of aggression. Shitampo's lying lurking. in wait. He's lurking. He's going to go in. Rama with a face shift. Not enough to do it. And the gem struck picked up, and Shitampo flying hooks away. And yes, the still this time. It's return to Zender. Love to see that the protective pirouette means he can be far more aggressive. He lies in wait in the back line, and now they're going to sit on this pile oh. of gems. Mackenzie's got to get taken down. Shitampo's only got eight gems to work with. Still a lead for Zeta Division 1, but again, they need that map control back. Here's the magic hand. Oh, one gem's going to go over, but they've got to get another one to get on Cal down. It's seven there. Rama's holding for how long? Great shield there from Goku. And the result of the back. Future now as well. It's still time, but Chatswick have got to go on the aggressive. Once again, Shitampo, not the ideal gem carrier here, but he's going to lie in wait in these pushes. Try and get back to his side of the map, protect the pirouette again, going to make him a bit more durable. Rama's trying to get into the cookie jar though, and he's taken down. Sitampo is out of control. Now we try to salvage the situation, but it's too far gone here. And we've got a countdown for Zeta Division 1, almost all the gems to their name. There's a bit of time to spend there for the respawn, but Gero goes down as well. Rama has no super, has no utility, has no speed. And Shitampo should be home safe and sound with a bit of body blocking there from Ryan Goku for safe measure. Now he's the last chance. He goes down. A great response from Zeta. These teams are leaving it all out there straight out of the gates, ladies and gentlemen. A, uh, a unconventional approach, I think, in that round for Zeta Division 1. They find that Shitampo is carrying most of the gems, but he's the one that they want to use to try and get that map control. I love that ninja play, sat in the bush. He had everything he needed to completely derail Chasmak. Okay, well, Shitampo's in a very tough spot here. Three versus one, and does go down. That's going to allow Gary to come from the right-hand side and keep that pressure on. I love the angle between himself and Rama, just keeping that pressure on to Kenji, who can't really do much until he heals back up now. Couple early gems here for Zeta Division 1, so they can lean into this a little bit more. Gero needs to be dug out of this right-hand side, and Kenji, he obliges. Yeah, again, another miss super, and that's going to be costly as Moi Goku gets the takedown of Naoi. Rama then on the left, and He's got to try to weave his way around the place with this pressure for Kenji with the ball, and Gara goes down yet again. And again, Shitampo carrying the gems. So I'm curious to see how this is going to change the approach now for Zeta Division 1. Kenji gets a little bit caught out there, not much he can do. Now he does have super available, so they're probably going to try and 2v1 this Otis. The mute connects, but now he's not in a great position. Moya Goku trying to stave off the rest of Chasmak, and it pays off. There's going to be a trade here, and Shitampo looking for Rama. Got to admire the awareness there of Shitampo, just knows the flying hook in and just deflate that pressure, that push, and as quickly as that, they're back into the mid, and you know, the gems at the moment are in favor of Chasmak, but I feel the confidence is growing for Zeta. No doubt about it. Now we're really trying to posture aggressively here on the left. Gero just wants to hold Zeta Division 1 back, impossible. The map control belongs to them. It's a very close game in those gems, and Rama's going to be very slippery. He's going to take a lot for Shitampo to be able to close the gap and wrest them out of his hands. Now we're living dangerously. Kenji has the magic hand up, and you can see Zeta Division 1 are looking to make use of it soon. There it is. Mute comes out, but there's no follow-up. They got that control. Now they've evened out the gems, and Rama, though, has speed. He's going to use it now. Now they're coming in. A couple of shots here and there, but not too much value, to be completely honest. Oh! And the pole connects from Kenji, and Zeta show us how it's done. One jump away from countdown, but what can Garou do on this bottom right-hand side to stop this countdown? Not a whole lot, right? He's not in a great position to actually bounce these shots, so really his range is limited. Oh. Kitampo, though, he has to oh. get away. Flying hook used, but most of the gems are dropped. Kenji was carrying almost half of them, and now Chasmak get the countdown. They're able to find the one vulnerability on the side of Zeta, and it's nine seconds left. Rama is the one who gets Shitampo going in, gets the takedown of Garou. Will he be able to do much? The 
shield is there, but he's got six gems. He's so low in terms of HP. Now we got pulled in there, but is that going to be enough? And Chasmak have done it. What a way to even the series. Turns out their bark and bite just as nasty as one another. And you can see their jaws on the floor, literally in the arena. And this is what I wanted to see. It felt like Chasmak deserved that set. It felt like they could have deserved the set in the first set, to be completely honest. And now we are all level. And I think that is not where people expected to see this one going. Yeah, pretty awkward though. Like, I, I want to kind of talk to you about this kind of split gem carrying that we saw a lot of the time from Zeta Division 1. Often by necessity, you know, Shitampo has to go in and pick up what's dropped, but it put them in some awkward situations where it was not one, but two players that were at great risk of losing the lead for their team by getting picked off. Yeah, this was the vulnerability which you know, Chasmak really exploited. And, but you know, I've got to say, when Geru missed a lot of those supers, I was a bit hesitant to see how it was going to fare, but he hit them when it mattered most. And you know, I've got to say as well, Brahma was playing phenomenal. I mean, both of those countdowns were a result of the way that he was able to get the, the snatch out of the spawn and you know, get running back into their spawn. The state of division had you no know, sort of egg on their face. Yeah, not where they wanted to be there. Nice use of super there for Rama to be able to dive on in, find that elimination here. And yeah, I mean, no surprise to see Shitampo credited with many of these eliminations, but up front and center in the enemy's face, not where you want to be when you have nine gems. Exactly. You know, ultimately, the objective is where you've got to play, and that is a statistic which goes to show the aggressiveness of Zeta Division 1. But Chasmak were just able to you know, get those clutch deals. Now this is going to be interesting. I've been watching Zeta Division 1 in scrims on Dueling Beatles, and they have been so, so fierce. I hope Chasmak have been scrutinizing it as much as I have. Poco in the mid here, they are going to be a difficulty to check, and it's not banned. Yeah, a distinctive map here, but this is actually Chasmak's best game type. It is. 86% win rate here on Hot Zone, so far and above their home ground. Let's see how they make use of that advantage, if it exists. The first pick coming in, Zeta with the bands there of Stu, B, and it's going to be Gus coming in. I'm not surprised to see it, but they're not going to show the Poco just yet. Ruffs would be a nice one for them as well. They've had that a lot on this map in scrims. Squeak as well. Penny in the uh, Crow band out by the side of Charles McBell. It's a good first pick, by the way. It's a, it's a kind of safety net. It doesn't kind of give away too much too soon. And it is a very versatile brawler, especially with the reload gear now. It's really coming in so, so prominently into the meta. Gus, now Zeta, want to get their hands on that brawler. Gus and Otis picked up for them there. Uh, Moya Goku's been uh, on Gus so far, had some fantastic use of the gadget Kuki Popper, right? As soon as that ghost gets generated on, you know, on hit with one of his uh, opponents, he, uh, he pops it up pretty much straight away. I haven't seen Buster yet today. You know, I'm, I'm thinking that this could be the time to do so. Right. It's going to be a little bit of a later pick ultimately because if there's too much wall breaking potential on the map, then that could be something that could then be a, a troubling thing. Rough spike, Chasmak. It's like they're reading Zeta quite well here. Like picking that brawler now, I think it's a wise choice. Ultimately one that would have really nicely wrapped up the draft on the side of Zeta Division 1. So, you know, the sandbags especially, of course. Because you be... staying power, right? Exactly, yeah. Having some of that in the mix, you know, it can just provide that time that you need on the zone to really trickle down the timer and, and make the most of the objective. Open up some of those sight lines for Rama as well with air superiority, right? You do yeah. have some wall break potential if you want to go in that direction. And it's a very serviceable side lane brawler, you know, if you want to take them there. Yeah, pass them in a curious one. I mean, Ooh. you know, that definitely benefits from grouping up, but so does Pam. Love to see that come in here. Yeah, it's a very underrated brawler here. You know, SK would use this a lot in the EMEA region. It's a difficult one to shake. Um, ultimately, normally left as a third and final pick, but you know, you get that defensive nature of it and that the healing quality is off the back of it. And now Zeta are kind of feeling probably themselves, we need some healing here. Yep. Uh, you know, ultimately it's gonna be very tough for them to be able to push when there's so much potential for Pam to dominate. It's all about that stay oh. power right now. It's <laughs> not healing up. What is this? <laughs> Again, the Carl gonna be picked up. It seems to be a staple diet so far for Zeta, but I mean, it did drop off the meta a little bit in other regions. But again, you know, this is one of those things that I love about the World Finals because all the other teams are watching to see what everyone else is doing. And, you know, maybe now people are starting to realize how they missed a trick with Carl, how they've forgotten about the aggressive nature of it and what it can do. And hopefully for Zeta, they're able to use that flying hook really, really well like they have been and go in and get that aggressive start. 
Chitampa wants to start to get some of that first little capture progress down. All right, Rama, trying to give Chitampa the hot foot here with that gadget activation. Chitampa, though, pretty well unperturbed. Moya Goku really wants to close the gap on Naoi as much as possible. He's looking out for Scrap Sucker, but another gadget activation from Rama. But he goes the way of the Weary first. Good start for Zeta, and the Fat Splatter is popped there by Moya Goku. Quite obviously so, and he's going to place it down on the left hand side. Chitampa going in and going to get that take down onto Rama. That's going to delay the onset of these spawns, and already 40% of time on the zone. And Chazback have really got to start to get into this, and that is a good way to start. And you do knock out a little bit of some of that protective architecture as the uh, as the red side here, but Rama more happy to get aggressive and keep Zeta Division 1 moving. 49 to 9 already though, so Zeta off to a, an absolute red hot start. Rama so low there and the scrap sucker didn't quite connect for now, so that's going to allow then Zeta to push forward just a little bit. Now finally some healing potential, but Shitampo is oh. very early on flying hooking, gets Gary taken down and what a play from him. Rama quickly to follow is screen now in a three versus one. That is not going to help, but he's doing his best. Yeah, look, Zeta are quite low here, so a bit of uncertainty about who's going to trade time on the point here. Now a decent range, of course. Scrap Sucker extremely punishing, and Gero has returned now. Nest tech thrown down here just in case the aggression comes, but Shitampo's able to go around it, and the positive feedback's not enough to keep Jiro up. Yeah, a great time to do it. He knows exactly where it is. He doesn't want to forget later on in the map as now he then goes down, leaving Rubber completely exposed as well. 60% now for Zeta, and pushing forwards with the shield pop there from Kenji. Geru is going to struggle if he does get the mark landed, but now he goes down himself, and this is going to be a tough spot. Zeta are still holding on. None of that cover left now for Chazmak as they try and hold their ground. It's going to be a healing oh. stage on the left hand side, but Shitampo oh. will not be denied. <laughs> That's two eliminations there for the superstar, and Chazmak are getting run out of town. Boyko is spinning, and I think rightly so, because Shitampo was absolutely dominant, and I feel like maybe it's the time <laughs> to start batting that particular brawler against this very team. Hands on hips there for Shitampo. He says, can't believe we're in this situation. We're gonna, we're gonna focus up a little bit here after dropping that second set. That looked pretty dominant. So no, no take cover, no sandbags for the roughs here. It's actually the, uh, that air kid. support. You're just really trying to make it hard to stand in one place as Zayda up on that point. Early placement there as well for Rama, just trying to get some early time on the zone. And I agree with that as well. That's what kind of Chazbuck didn't have the best start previously. They do need to start that now. But the damage gears are in play. Takedown is there though also. Boy got good low and Kenji is going to be pushing down from the right and now he's got to yeah, take care of that. He is so durable though, but eventually damage comes in from too many different angles. Rama now with the supply drop, Shitampo wants to get in. They've been focusing Rama <laughs> down so hard. Every time he appears, Shitampo is beeline for that Russ. It's a great pairing, isn't it, between Kenji and Shitampo. You know, getting that shield in and that's just in the right timings for Shitampo to really get the maximum value. But now we're already out of position there. Rama has muted out as well. The Kuki Popper as well coming into play will keep him low. But that healing station from the Palm is now really starting to get the value it needs. And keeping that distance between themselves and Zeta is going to keep it standing. Shitampo going in here. Very durable. Again, so much oh. available. I mean, if there's a protected pirouette oh. in the mix, oh. he just cannot be taken down. Another two kill for Shitampo. Absolutely filthy. Disgusting stuff. It really is. And he's just on an absolute tear yeah. right now. Chazmak don't know what to do with him. So he's <laughs> kind of leaving him. Great pickup though from Rubber. Great observation. Able to notice that it's the perfect time for that kill takedown. And they've got now the high ground starting to get ahead. They are in the lead with one minute, 30 seconds remaining. Good turret, uh, good healing station placement here. Rather, Shitampo doesn't care. It's another gas super. And it's another dive on him with the tail spin. Absolutely dirty. Oh. Hero can't even stand up. But now say to Division 1, it can make up that deficit. If Shitampa gets super, it's a guaranteed kill, if not three back to back, isn't it really? It's just applying so much pressure. That's a great new there from Goku. Keeps there the low. No, now he's so low, and the pickup is now three versus one. It's just Zeta Division clearing house. Strong lead now for Zeta Division. Goku has another mute available. Shitampa more than happy to trade. Blows here to try and build the super. He gets the gut shield. He can't go in and follow it up, but it doesn't matter. Zeta had built enough of a lead. What a dominant showing on Hot Zone. My word. Zeta just looked so much better, didn't they? They just did that map and mode just for them. It's just like icing on the cake. They, they welcome it. They really do. Chazmak had a much better game, though. We, we got to hand it to them. They did learn from some of their mistakes. And that is what it takes to beat a team like Zeta Division 1. They've got to hold on to that as well now, because ultimately, you know, they've got to harness it. They've got to remember that they're not, un they're not invincible. They've already gained a set, but it's not over yet.
There's a chance that teams playing against Zeta Division 1 have to start fanning the Carl. Protective Pirouette obviously reduces damage taken by 35%, and then the Gus Super Shield on him makes him... It's like Frank. Yeah, Frank running in there, spinning, just laying about himself there. That is absolutely scary to deal with. And, you know, Shitampa wasn't afraid to run straight at Pam. She was on a healing field chair. Mama Squeeze, didn't matter. Just run in there and find that elimination. He cannot be stopped when he has that, that supportive utility behind him. And what a dominant way to say, hey, we're Zeta Division 1. We're not playing around anymore. Yeah, Zeta were throwing everything at that, including the kitchen sink. I mean, you know, there was so much potential in Chasmax comp to really kind of counter some of those ideas. But it didn't matter. You know, that is really quite a scary prospect because now being at this stage in terms of sets, Chasmax are probably wondering, what do we have to do? You know, I think for me, the time is now to start banning Carl. They're really kind of giving in to Zeta on what they want. They played it in every single set so far. Okay, they, they gained a set themselves. That's right. But it was a lot to do with the fact that they timed those kind of gem snatches when it was the right time. There's some to do awkward so. moments with, you know, the, the whoever was carrying the gems in some of those maps. In fact, that it wasn't Shitampo that got picked up to actually give them the win. They went straight after uh, Kenji, I think, on the gene there. So uh, Carl obviously still looms as a serious threat here. And we see like the aggression behind it, right? A lot of confidence here for Zeta Division 1. They want to come forward. You kind of mentioned you were glad to see Rama get more aggressive at the start of that last round on the roughs. But again, what does roughs do when that car comes running at it? Exactly. It's, it's you know, it leaves you with nowhere to go. Coming out now then into Heist. And this is going to be such an interesting affair because ultimately the decision between the sharpshooters and the tanks and Bell is that, again, safe pick for Chasmak early on. It's all bridge too far, but maybe you hot potato. Yeah. And uh, I think it is bridge too far. Hot potato is obviously the graphic that's being shown there, but that's fine. Let's talk bands here, okay? A lot of these longer range fallers getting taken out of the mix. Piper, Lola being removed, 8 bit also, not a factor now as well as he can really safely scale those side lanes. Use cheat cartridge to return to that damage amplification field. And Colette obviously is just a menace here. Uh, I mean, time to collect allows her to get that free safe damage really unpunishable. Oh, well, <laughs> you've got it, man! <laughs> you've just got it! <laughs> Deja vu, isn't it, really? Well, again, it's going to have a, a great deal of utility to get across the lanes with the flying hook, and that's the thing here, why it's going to be a great brawler to have as that first pick here for Zeta. You know, Ape, I think, is a wise man as well. You know, the Reno gear really bringing that brawl into a great place. Ultimately, you, know, you can gain so much damage potential. Lola can scout those bushes as well. Piper, obviously, you know, with such range, a great thing to eradicate. Those later picks, I think B would be a good shout here, simply in the eventuality of a Daryl. You know, Bonnie coming in is not a bad shout as well, and you know, keeping some you know, momentum shift. You've got to keep going in on the safe. It's great to have that control, but if you're not getting objective damage, you're not going to win. Plenty of all-in options here for Zeta Division 1 if they want to go that route, just sort of rush the safe once they find that they have that sort of brawler advantage. Bonnie obviously great in her modality. She's got pretty decent range, and when she wants to uh, get her hands dirty, she can do that pretty comfortably as well. Chasmax so far with a relatively safe looking draft. I want to see if they look to sort of augment Bell's sort of ability to hold the enemy at range. Or oh, oh, something oh. up in your face. I like it. I really do. But they've got to consider the potential of the counter now. It's a pretty and early tank pick. Yes, exactly that. And Zeta have got that final pick. So I think they've kind of got to pair this with B. I mean, that's just kind of my opinion, but you can get some really great value from Honey Molasses in that mid. It can actually, you know, kind of seep in and then cause a real problem, and it is going to be that. Great I call. do love this from Chasmak. It's a great decision. All right, so pretty safe brawlers here for that long range, and then there's always the option for Daryl to get in there and get the job done. So here's the question for State of Division 1. Are you thinking much about trying to counter this Daryl? Is that a concern for you? It's got to be a little bit, but Zeta are so aggressive, they might decide just to go aggressive themselves. I mean, Gale wouldn't be the worst of ideas here. You know, it is a, a great brawler to have against Daryl in the majority of heist maps, but ultimately they might want to go with something else themselves to be able to give themselves the edge. Gus, to, no, sorry, Otis, to stay on that Daryl. Mute him out, just be at that position where you hold back the push. But I do like this from Chasmak. I've got to say, if they can make this work, it could go a long way. Yeah, I mean, denying the ability for Daryl to get out of jail as well, especially if he's getting pressured down with that super. A pretty good answer. Again, there's a real theme to these Zeta Division 1 compositions, but this time around, I wonder if we see uh, the Carl play a little bit differently because in terms of that supportive, uh, you know, utility, not there, there's no Gus here. 
Kenji flying, hooking straight into that high ground. I do like that. Rama so low already, but the damage gear might help out there. And the juggling of the tasks there between Rama and Garu as well is why I just think that Carl Pick is really quite a good one. Look at this doubling down on the right hand side there because they can't get to Kenji. Shitampo then choosing to come over himself, and I, I, I love this start. But the Honey Molasses is a problem in the middle lane, so I like as they one, they adapt, they try and collapse on this right side, but this might work against them. Now he's encroaching. Kenji is able to get back a little bit there and put some pressure down, but Rama will approach as well. Forces Kenji away, but Moya Goku's going to work on the safe. He's got over 50% damage on the safe so far. He's been unreal in this match. The damage coming in, great connection there from Naomi on the gadget side. It will bring things down to a little bit more of an even scoreline, but they've got a lot of work to do. They've got to gain that control that they've been lacking so far in this game. It's not going to be a base race against a team like Zeta. You've got to clear up those lanes and you've got to clear up the scraps. Shitampo in trouble, no super to get him out of danger. And now we're now going to make the approach towards the safe. Moya Goku hits the mute though. They're able to pick up now. He, now it's Gero. High and high use. Gero just blocking some of that damage with the Honey Molasses that won't be available to him now. Now he's able to stave off Kenji, but look at the safe's health. Difficulty is as well is that Gary's got to start to yeah, get that amplified shot, connect to the safe, and keep juggling that between player and safe. Ultimately, the BHP shots are not too effective. Oh, oh. beautiful placement there on the next egg as Kenji is caught off guard. Yeah, Rama even marks Kenji just to make sure that damage is going to stick. Shitampo out of cannon right now. No Clyde to the body. And they'll be back up in no time. It's a huge lead. Moya Goku's oh. threatening. He's oh. looking at the game right now, and he gets it done. Oh, you've got to respect that. Otis. Sneaking his way into your side of the map. Zeta now one game away, and this is where the pressure is on for Chasmak. Will their journey come to an end, or will they prevail through? They've got to hit the mark now. No more second chances for them. And again, they can't be leaving team uh, players from Zeta on that safe. They can't allow the damage to rain in for free. KG play through the middle part of the map here as Gero and Shitampo trade. Oh, I like that. A bit of extra damage on Naoi. He's seen better days. And Moya Goku again wins that 1v1. Rama's in trouble as well. Positive feedback. Not going to cut the mustard. Iron Hive there by Gero to make sure he lines up. Yeah, nice mute though. We'll keep Chasmak a little bit slower to push forwards. Now he's trying to get into a good spot on the right. Rama coming through on the left as well, trying to find the angle there onto Shitampo. And now he's got a great pick up there from Gary from the mid. And now some damage starting to roll in. That's now he rolls in himself on the right hand side. Really keeping a Zeta Division 1 busy on that right hand lane so Chasmak can start to apply pressure by the left and middle. Gero though in deep trouble. Not much he can do about that as Shitampo wants to ignore Rama. He wants to push forward now. He's going all in. Yeah, fast by the connection, but now he and Rama survive. Moya Goku's got to consider hitting this mute and he's actually just whistling Rama down there, which is really great for him, but now he's lurking. They're ready and waiting for that roll to come in and they're not pushing forward too far too soon. Here's the double roll coming in. Mute does connect. Now he's low and it's going to be picked up. Note here that Chasm give a slim lead, 2% on safe health. Zeta Division 1 want to try and find a way to approach, but Rama staves Moya Goku off again. Yeah, this is, this is much better, honestly, from Chaz back there, just taking it a bit slower oh! and working their way through the problems, but Shatampo is that problem right now. Kenji picking up the slack as now he has got to finalise this lane. Kenji out in the open there, no chance to get back to his side of the map. It is a slim lead for Zeta Division 1, but a lead all the same. Rama getting the better of this lane assignment. Moya Goku really would prefer to deal with Naoi. He needs to not get too close to that safe. The damage is bouncing and now he goes in, pushing on the right hand side. He finds two. I love this so far from Chesman, they're just keeping Moe Goku low, but not allowing him to respawn, but just keeping him out of the game. And Shitampo jumps in, clears that Rama. Geru's very low here, but he gets a very important kill at 25 seconds on the clock. That's a huge lineup, denying Zeta Division the chance to push up here. Kenji doesn't really have the range. He's going to have to put himself in danger if he wants to affect that safe. But Gero's really feeling the brunt of that damage now from the Carl. And Moe Goku approaches through the mid. We're down to 10 seconds, but Shitampo's down. Rama picks up the kill on the left-hand side, allowing him to get damage now. It's not enough time to feel for Zeta Division. Shazmak with a lifeline. Great stuff from them, and they learned from their previous mistakes. Chasmak Gaming EU refused to go home out like that. Hanging on there, some lane swaps there, trying to get sort of slightly better matchups. And you see, as soon as Daryl doesn't have to go up against the Otis, he's going to find these single, these double eliminations there and start to close the gap. Great stuff, honestly. 
It's so close. Imagine if we go to the fifth and final set on this one. I would love for nothing more to kick us off, but kicking us off in terms of damage so far, Moai Goku in that mid, and that was the very man that in that first round, he was the one that got it down to 50% early on. Shazmak cannot afford at this stage to get back into those bad habits. Nice work by Rame, helping Naoi out there as against that Division 1. Try and double team the Daryl. It doesn't work out this time. But they respect Moya Goku coming back off respawn. What's happening on the other side of the map? Shitampa with the range, pressuring down the safe. Marked up as well, though, and that will be a concern for him. Now healing up a little bit. Oh, beautiful! Up and by shot. Great stuff there from Garu. And Kenji just popping all of the nest eggs. Great value there, despite going down. Yeah, love that idea. Obviously, only a limited number of those that Bell can bring into a round. Maybe only one left here for Rama. Getting cleaned up in a big way now, clearing the way through the mid. Zeta still have that link they're able to recruit early thanks to Shitampo with the solo pressure. Kenji has that damage here now, but choosing to heal forwards. Not there, though. Good decision because now he's now rolling in. Chooses better Robich trying to fade his way forward as he is in the difficult spot here. But then again, the damage is still going to keep Zeta Division 1 in this lead and the pressure surely mounting. Chazmak maybe just gave them a little bit too much too soon. The little preempted from now he, he wasn't quite close enough to get the most value out of his shots there and he ends up falling over he gets to the safe and gets oh. the double collapse onto the right side lane and we might be in all in territory now Ark. Disaster for Chasmak, they've got to deal with this and now he's the only one who can so far they need to make a decision quick as the damage continues to rain in. It's 25% remaining now. Rama's doing his thing but they don't deal with this problem. It's all over. Now he's trying to stay alive, trying to keep the pride of Poland alive in the world finals but it's such a tough hill to oh. climb now. Now he's here with the mute. He's going to be forced back. Honey Molasses not bothering Zeta Division 1 too much. They're starting to make their final approach. 4% left. Just a couple of shots. And Kenji with flying. Oh, there it is from Shitampo. The killing blow. And Zeta Division 1 proceed forwards and send Chas back home. Perhaps not as clean a start as Zeta Division 1 would have wanted, but you can, you can attribute that to the pluckiness of Chasmac Gaming EU, the number six seed from EMEA, shock set of Division One, sneaking away with one of those sets and refusing to back down. You love to see that. Already a big test for Zeta Division One at the start of the World Finals arc. I really, really feel like everyone at home right now has admired the way that Chasmac Gaming approached that game. I mean, they really made Zeta Division 1 work for it. They did not give it to them easy. That was a match that could have well gone to a fifth final set, in honesty. And, you know, by far a separation from that 91 to 9% you know, poll that we had at event.brawlstars.com. They did great. Just a couple of two mistakes too early, I felt, in highest, and Zeta capitalized. Now again, Maya Goku, of course, Sitampo. A lot of damage being dealt in a round like that, of course, as it is constant fighting. But it's that adaptation made by Zeta Division 1, right? We double down on that right side lane. We try and make it so Daryl can never get close enough to get that insta-kill or to find those early eliminations. Very, very hard for Chasmat to get value out of their pick, although we love it. We love to see that. It gives you great all-in potential. And that last round, Shitampo starts off by just all-inning, just going straight down that right side lane and getting a ton of early damage. Very respectable showing here from Chasmat Gaming EU, but sadly, their run ends here. Sadly so. I mean, again, I don't feel like people expected that much from the middle ones just based upon the fact that they were the number six seed. Sure. But they look today like a number two, like a number one seed. It's Saints Division One, you know? You don't see matches like that normally when the seeds are so far apart. I think they did tremendously well. Saints Division One, though, again, just kept the pressure on. You know, they forced the decision-making from Chazmak. They just kept going and doubling down those lanes. And you know, Chazmak just felt a little bit un unnerved by that. They couldn't really determine what they were going to do and how. So how was your prediction? Did you go well? I think we were correct on ours. You can head over to event.brawlstars.com and make your own. If you missed that first match, don't worry. You've got plenty of time to make your way. Of course, they're fantastic, Tara Skin. Get your predictions in for that next match and have a chance to vote on your MVP. A lot of candidates, in my opinion, on the Zeta Division 1 side. Three of them, in fact, as we saw. Fantastic play across that entire team. The Carl, I think, was a recurring theme in those first couple of maps, right? I think that might be a, a big storyline already emerging here on day one. Yeah, like I said, you know, teams and players are watching with eagle eyes as to what everyone across the regions are doing. And, and that is a problem which we have not seen massive play rates for in all honesty recently. And now Zeta's showing us that it is still very much in the forefront of their meta.
Here is your bracket again with our first match finalized. Zeta Division 1 advanced to the quarterfinals. They will await the winner of EMEA number two, Reply Totem, and NA and Latam North number two, Vatra Gaming. Another incredible matchup on hand for us here. Two teams that are really very stylistically similar. When you look at their journey throughout this year, very, very similar, very mirrored. You know, both of these two teams took a little bit of time to get into their flow. And that was noticeable but when they got into their flow. You know, it happened towards the later stages, which brings us to the World Finals. So coming in, they really are both at that stage in their careers where everything seems to be going right. I mean, for Fatra, there's a little bit less LAN experience. Reply Totem really have that advantage. Sure. So a lot of people siding with Reply Totem. But I do feel like Fatra are a team that many are underestimating. And I feel like like they really shouldn't. They are doing so, so well. Based on what we've seen from them in their whole region, they're, they're not underdogs. There's probably no matchup really outside of going up against Zeta Division where you could maybe consider them to be underdogs. They will be taking on Zeta Division 1 if they're able to get a win in that next game. I mean, Reply Totem, really exciting team, of course. Queso Cup winners, they beat SK Gaming. They're showing that, you know, they had a fantastic second half of the year after that MSI. Yeah, two grand final appearances and two grand final wins. You know, straight away, if they're in the grand final, more often than not, they tend to win it. And ultimately, you're really, really doubling down on double points. They saw the opportunity, they seized it. This is a team with a very experimental play style, so the draft mixed things up for them a little bit here. Can't wait to see what they get ready for us as we head down to the stage and bring them on out. Et allez, le deuxième match du jour qui va commencer après un gros premier match. On va dans d'autres régions, on prend d'autres teams. Et la première team à introduire dans un monde où les finales, chaque mois, toujours changent de champion. C'est la seule équipe qui a été championne deux mois de suite avec le championnat de juillet et d'août. Un tonnerre d'applaudissements pour Reply Totem One of the most feared teams in the EMEA region. And for good reason. Joker, Maru and Maori with their coach Inso are a force to be reckoned with. Reply to finish the top four of the 2021 World Finals, looking to be the sole survivor this year. The only team in the EMEA region to win back-to-back -back Grand Finals and almost entirely undefeated throughout two whole seasons in the Snapdragon Pro Series. They've already lifted one trophy this year. Will they be lifting the grandest prize of all before the year is out? Your July and August EMEA champions this team. And the name you said first is the one I want to talk about. Joker is the real deal. Held by many EMEA players and insiders as the best player in that region. He is a big deal, but these guys have quite the challenge ahead of them. Before we get there, let's bring him out. Et leur adversaire du jour, c'est l'équipe qui représente le Mexique. C'est une équipe qu'il est difficile de pas être fan. On les aime beaucoup, beaucoup de bruit. Para Mexico, Vatra Gaming. Payne, RBM, Juan Carlos, Coach Peter Jack. May it start of the year, slow burners. But that place grew with the competition to what is now nothing short of a fiery inferno. It's one of the most charismatic teams in the entire BSC. They exude confidence and hold a spirit that cannot be broken. The grand final win in September, and very almost yet again in October, Vatra Gaming truly are at the very top of their game. I think it's safe to say this team was the most successful NA and Latam North team in the second half of the season. This organization makes their entry into the Brawl Stars Championship as sister teams, Vatra Amaterasu and Volcano. Eventually, one of those teams moves on, but they really double down on that Amaterasu roster, and this team has been incredible. Peter Jack, the coach of this team, said, oh, we think Totem actually have a really similar style to us. Very aggressive, really in your face. And Inso actually agrees with that, coach of Reply Totem. In fact, Inso said, you know, out of all the teams we had to go up against, I'd really prefer it not be Vatra, just because <laughs> that's the kind of style we like to own. And when we have to go up against a team that's so similar, I mean, anything could happen. Really hard to predict. It's great to hear that, isn't it? Because it really does send a lot of merit to the fact that these two teams are so similar. And today they're going to have to find the, the areas where they are not and expose them and really knuckle down for this one. Ultimately, I've loved to watch both of the two teams' journeys throughout this year. This, this is such a great example of growth. 
and that is something that, you know, coming into the World Finals is such a great thing to have. But in that same respect, Reply Totem's final few months, they weren't their greatest, honestly. You know, they're, they're kind of... Performance question marks. So much. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, you know. Like losing to SK, you know, in the, in the uh, October or the September monthly finals, rather, and then going out in the quarterfinals of October to Bax. That, that was very uncharacteristically of them. Again, we saw an experimental uh, draft uh, from this Reply Totem team. So when Chasmac benefited from the change to the draft system, uh, Reply Totem actually believed that they didn't benefit from it. In fact, they had to adapt because they were a team that liked to come out of the gates with really unpredictable compositions. Weird brawlers, ones you don't expect. Now when your pick and ban is a bit more telegraphed, it's a bit more of a, it's easier to get a read on your opponent before the game started. So this team had to adapt, bringing in Joker was a big difference maker for this team, because not only is he an incredibly mechanically gifted player, but he really pitched in on the strategic and the drafting side. He and Inso sort of worked that by committee, and it gave Reply Totem another level of depth. And we saw that, I think, after MSI in the later part of the year. I think this team is really good, but yeah, falling out in a quarterfinal in your home region against a team like Bax, who were struggling to sort of maybe make it in, not a great look. We want to see consistency from Reply Totem, at least those that predicted them anyway. I know you and I are just feeling like Vatra has got something special, something we haven't seen, maybe a bit of an X Factor. And can I be honest with you? I think Reply Totem looked a little bit nervous the last couple of days. This is something which we get to see, isn't it? It's a great thing to be here for that very reason. We get to see how the teams are. And Reply Totem have been very reserved, very calm. That could go for them or it could go against them. Vatra have been the exact opposite. Again, as one of the more charismatic teams in the BSC, yes. very big personalities. Vatra pulling pranks. I think like, you look at Bobby's tweet. I think it was like, yeah. one Carlos or, or one of the players was like knocking on Bobby's door at 7 a.m. Exactly. Like, wait, come up, getting in his head. They're having a lot of fun here, and that's bound to translate uh, sort of into their play style. Reply Totem on the other end. Uh, so this morning I'm walking through the hotel, right? There's like a kids area. It had some like little TVs, cartoons are on there, whatever. Yeah. The whole kids area is taken up by Reply Totem in their black <laughs> hoodies and black sweatpants with their iPads out. And they are just, they're just getting ready. And I said, so, you know, this is for maybe people a little bit younger. He's like, listen, we couldn't find, uh, you know, the right kind of venue to get everyone together. So we ended up here. I said, but little Timmy wants to watch Shrek. No, not having it. They are very, very serious. And they really wanted to make sure their prep was nailed down. That's dedication for you, isn't it? You know, you've got, work never stops, and ultimately you've got to, uh, you know, make the most no of every the opportunity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there are a lot of screaming kids around here in Disneyland Paris, I can assure you. So definitely not the most calm of environments for them to be able to perform under. <laughs> so, Inso, uh, you know, again, sort of rely on some of our conversations with them. This one actually came up in an interview. Shout out to Lucas BS, who, for, who put the magazine together. Incredible stuff. For the World Finals. So big shout out to you. Uh, Inso says he thinks that uh, the winner, uh, this is getting ahead of himself. He says the winner of Reply Totem versus Zeta Division 1 will win Worlds. That's obviously assuming that Reply Totem advanced past this match, which I think is a big leap to take, but yeah. he really thinks that that side of the bracket, this, this first four games, has some of the top teams in there. Ark, I'm so ready to get this one on. Yeah, layer cake and bounty is where it's going to go down, but in that same idea, I've got to bring it back around. So October, this was the map that led Bax versus Reply Totem into the third set. So this is definitely going to bring back some memories. It was such a clutch finale, and it brought things enough time uh, back in for Bax to get that comeback. So they've got to shake that one off. And that was a crazy game down to the final seconds where 15 yeah. stars changed hands here. Let's talk bands. I think they're smart. You know, Reply Totem banning out Ash is a great way to start because Vatra are going to bring in some tanky ideas. They know that. We haven't seen any of Buster today despite being banned, but Vatra feel like it is definitely a worthy one to ban here. I, for one, agree. Max, again, a great aggressive idea that Reply Totem would normally like to implement themselves. Getting that one eradicated, getting Poco eradicated, I do feel that is the right approach. Penny, as well, can get a lot of value from that turret for Vatra. They don't want to deal with that. This is such a classic pick for Layer Cake. I feel like we see uh, the Tick come in here pretty much all the time. I like the idea of also taking Janet off the table, right? Really safe, really sort of, uh, you know, middle of the road kind of brawl of that. Again, when, when you get pressured and you've got a lot of the stars, you can just get out there and get back to sort of safety. It's also the kind of reason why, you know, Piper is valued here as well. You yeah. know, pinch and pop and gets you out of trouble. And that's why he's going to get picked here. <laughs> oh, I look so smart. Oh my God. <laughs> Speaking of the devil, great stuff. I mean, that is a scary one because Piper in the North America and Latin North region really is a common one to have. And 
Tick, very susceptible to that same idea. So I think that that is a great way to start, honestly. Um, again, no reply toes now are in a bit of a troublesome position because they can't then break open the map and apply right. even more you know, ability for Vatra to have dominance. You want to give them the sight lines, right? Exactly that. I wonder if they might combine the roughs with this as well because ultimately over time in layer cake is where a brawler like roughs can get so much value. Otis is where they want to go and I think that's a good place to start. Yeah, and you want the option to go all in. You just want a really strong brawler when it comes to fighting over that middle part of the map and maybe try to push for the blue star. Otis is your brawler. Mute, we've already seen it be very oh. effective so far, but Carl definitely returning to flavor of the month status here. Gene coming in as well. I mean, Carl was Reply Totem's most used brawler this year. And it's normally Joker who plays it. Again, that aggressive, the aggressive nature that he has, very similar to the Enough Division star one. players on that mid-range brawler. It's so exciting to see. Daryl gets picked up here for Vatra. Again, last pick, that pick six. Tell us about this pick from Juan Carlos. Well, like we saw previously, you know, in that last matchup with Zeta and Chaz Mac, the Otis was a great counter. So I like what Vatra have done by picking Otis first. It's not giving much away and then seeing what they're up against. You know, this could be the very brawler which is going to keep Reply Totem in that back spawn area. You know, sure, you can feed a lot of value into Maori, so he has magic hand, but you can just work your way forwards. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Reply Totem versus Vatra Gaming starts now, and Joker's already set himself up the blue star. Yeah, great start for him. I mean, ultimately, that's going to give them some more of an early advantage for Vatra. are going to fight back with aggression. They're not going to let it go down to a one-star situation. They're starting to position themselves very cautiously. They don't want to be too much into Maori. Super Gear picked up here for that Otis, so that mute coming up 10% faster. Okay, Vatra Gaming really want to try to close the gap here. They've got RBM. He's the cat amongst the pigeons, and in he goes. Maori getting pressured down. He tries to take a shot. Oh, going to be oh, a trade. Oh. RBM comes out. That is stunning stuff. Really was beautiful work there to connect that and to bring back that bounty. That was a valuable maneuver there from Maori. And he has got to keep landing balls just like that. But RBM cycling the aggression now a bit too low. And Joker capitalizes down, furthering the lead then the Reply Toto. Again, we know these teams are both very aggressive, but Reply to uh, Vatra just gets a little bit ahead of themselves there. Look, recalling Rotator. Fantastic gadget use there, can give you more of that super, let you sort of snowball out of control, but he overextended. Joker wanted a bit of pain there, but he might get it. Not oh! quite he expected. Beautiful stuff. The knockback though for Maori. It's going to help out considerably, but Miss Paul there will keep RBM alive in the mix. Juan Carlos as well gets a pick of Maori. Oh, beautiful mute from Juan Carlos. Just in the nick of time. That's absolutely dirty. Joker thought he had the jump on him there, and he gets silenced instantly. Vatra now, 25 seconds left in the round. They have the lead, but Arbyan's trying to push back a little bit here. That extra durability was super health, but it's not enough. Now, two stars in, a Vatra with the blue still. Good tap there from Payne. Didn't follow up with the homemade recipe to much avail, but nonetheless, it's deflating the effectiveness of Maori without magic hand. RBM is such a thorn in their side right now, but the response is good. Oh, the jump away just in time. Still the blue star for Vatra, though. Three seconds left, two, and Vatra have the lead. The blue star is the difference maker in that first round. Oh, my goodness me. What a close one to start this one off. And, and this is what we said coming in. This is very much a 50-50 matchup. Yeah. Hold on to your hats, ladies and gentlemen. We are in for an absolute no holds barred brawl and pun very much intended. What a exciting way to finish that round. Let's see now how this one fares. The Fat Splatter early on, allowing RBM now to push forwards from the writers. The takedown from Maru was there as well. This is gonna give Vatry even more time to get themselves set up here. RBM always going to be playing forward on this right-hand side. We need to dodge a lot of this tick damage, but doesn't mind too much. Maru will probably get plenty of supers as a result there. Joker cops a glancing blow from the Piper in mid. We'll back away for a time, but Vatra have the lead despite not having the blue star. Here comes the Darrow roll. Going to be responded to by a Tailspin. Joker trying to deal with him, and RBM's out of the picture already. Yeah, a little bit overzealous there for me. Just a little bit. It was a one versus three. And despite RBM being able to cycle, actually, I mean, it's great to get the value, actually, to do so. But, you know, they've got to be a bit, bit cautious. They've got to combine that aggression with some calculative ideas a little bit more. But, hey, it's still the early game. I think it's not a bad time to start to do that. Juan Carlos starts to encroach again. But Joker gets in there. Bit of a star moment now. The blue star going over to reply total. Maru's Magic Club's keeping Maru topped up, and RBM struggling to get close. Great stuff. And that's the magic hand he'd sooner forget. Choker pops the flight hook there just for safety. And I think that was a white choice, but the taps there from Payne are strong. 
The healing puffs, though, is going to come in so key here. Great value for Reply Totem in this kind of position. If they can hold more here, they can survive this. Map really starting to open up now, giving Pain some pretty good sidelines. Something to be aware of. Pain is lurking and he's timing this well. If they can just get one final swoop, they can secure this. It's going to have to be an all-in though now as we're down to 18 seconds left in the round. Maru hold up in the corner there as Joker trying to soak a little bit. Pain trying to get a little bit closer, no connection there. Homemade recipe not elected to be used, and here comes RPM. In they go! It's gonna be a talisman from Joker as more. He's able to get RPM down. One Carlos trades with some three star lead to Reply Totem. Murray's in danger, pushed up against the corner, but Reply Totem hang on. Great resolve there from Reply Totem. Just putting the confidence into the composition. You love to see it starting to get their pace and time their runs. We saw Joker there just really going in with the flying hook at just the right times with no Piper Super to be able to jump away. And that's what you've got to do. You've got to look for those moments of weakness in your opposition. Scary how uh, durable Joker is compared to RBM. Uh, when that fight actually happens, it's pretty hard to get rid of the Carl, and Carl gets damaged while having that extra durability. RBM struggling there to break down Reply Totem's defensive setup. Here he goes again, on a Joker, he's gonna back away, Flying Hook gets him out of trouble. Side lane aggression, three stars to reply to him, but Juan Carlos is doing a lot of work here, fast splatter, well, oh no! Maru there with a beautiful gadget there, of the last hurrah to stay alive there, keeps the stars for Totem. It's all gone wrong, Payne's trying to posture aggressively here, but not a great position to be in now. He is the pigeon amongst the cats, apparently. Gets out there with the super though, back to safety, Vatra have to regroup. What that should do very well though, is that just take their time and they know that they can get the steal. Joker though is weak here. Danger. And they a great position there for RBM forcing Joker forward. But now he's found some space on the right. And oh, great magic hat connection there from Maori. Seven stars to O. Batcher are starting to crumble. That's the blue star. RBM has it, he's very low. Maori's able to pick him up. That's a crucial elimination. Ten to two in stars now. We head under a minute left. Decently for a ply totem here. Pain has to be really afraid of those tick supers. They're really hard to deal with. Oh, beautiful stuff. Great takedown, everyone. Harnessing on the weak link. Juan Carlos is doing his best from the left. Oh, again, Maru. What a time tick head that really was. Beautiful. Taking it and Pain can't do much about it. Yeah, now wants to move up. Magic hand. They won the Daryl. And they break him down to boards and rings. Juan Carlos now trying to pressure and he actually hits the mute on towards Maru, but the magic puff still ticking. Joker now oh. needed as well. Juan Carlos finds two supers in a space of three seconds, but he can't hold on. Here comes RBM to the rescue, or is he? Tails been used there by Joker and he's too durable. Far less close in that last round as Reply Totem plant their feet and say, no, no, we're here to play. The scariest part of that though was that with the number of stars that were available in that final push, Batra could have got a steal. It could have been a tie yet again. That blue star surely would have been in their pocket of the back of it. But this is what I love about Reply Totem. You know, for a team that have really you know, struggled at the start of the year to find themselves in such a way, they've got that experience that went under pressure, they're able to look around the house. Oh, uh, beautiful transactions there. You see how quickly the blue star changing hands there in the round that was as close as that was. That's critical. Joker tries to go aggressive, flying hook there, but it's pretty telegraphed, right? An opportunity for Otis just to use that super, shut the Carl down. But I'm going to be honest with you, Carl may as well be your tank. He fights like that, as <laughs> yeah. soon as RBM tries to engage, it's a tailspin, protected pirouette, super hard to bust him up, and I don't blame them for being excited about how this first set has gone. Great energy from Joker, and again, we were saying coming into this match, just how reserved they've been around the hotel, and you know, you know, that's, that's what we're waiting to see, you know? It, it's really fantastic stuff. Oh my word, look at that. Yeah. Maori. 10 takedowns, Pain with zero as well. Got to point that out too. Struggled a little bit there. Just couldn't quite find the, the momentum, the, the, the pacing. But Joker with the five, Maori with the two, but Reply Totem just really worked so well as a unit in that set. And again, they have to group up with RBM. Like, there needs to be follow up when RBM goes in. You can see uh, his damage, I mean, he's really designed to maybe take down a single target up close, but he wants to close the gap. The rest of the Vatra Gaming squad have to be able to follow up there. And you see that Joker comes out with uh, the most damage, which is no shock, because he's always in those fights. And again, he's looking to be uh, the boogeyman of the metagame here at the World Finals.
Yeah, I, I like the way that he was just so self-aware. You know, when you're a Carl player, you've got to time those aggressive ideas. Otherwise, you can be feeding stars into your opposition. The controlling element as well, a lot of uh, the, the pressure of those situations was down to him to keep that Daryl at bay. It's like a real captain's role, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, at least it's emerged that way so far. We're off to heist next, ladies and gentlemen. This is Reply Totem's best game type. An 89% win rate in sets. Got to be feeling good after snatching away that first set, too. Bands are in as well, Colette. B and Brock for Reply Totem. An early draft of roughs for Vatra, and I, I like that. In the safe zone, we see a lot of long range, slow, kind of aggressive lanes and mids. So having roughs to be, you know, be able to bring in the supply drops in over time, the longer the match goes on, the stronger your team get. So I think that's going to be a great start for them. I think the buzz ban is a great idea as well, because Reply Totem really love to bring in buzz here in safe zone 8-bit coming in for Reply Totem. So there's quad barrel stacks in the middle part of the map are actually pretty important to get rid of, because it allows mid laners to assist with the side lane matchups a lot of the time. So Payne might look to try and remove those fairly early, or at least the one on, on Vatra side of the map. Okay, our first Griff of the day getting picked up here by Maru. And a very underrated brawler. I've got to say one that is often used in North America and Latin North region as well, because they just seem to have an understanding as to how good it can be. I, th I feel like they might go in with Piper here on the side of Atra, um, or, or Bell even, because combining those rough supply drops with long range sharpshooters, you know, despite you know, having uh, the 8-bit turrets you know, on the side, and it is going to be Bell. Right, cool. I mean, it's great. I mean, having the nest egg in the mid is going to slow the advance, you know, and forcing out you know, Joker to have that damage booster on the ground, you know, they can use Utilize that sure for a bit of defensive capability, but ultimately, as an 8-bit, without that, you're pretty slow and sluggish. I'm really enjoying this draft from both sides so far, actually. Nothing too wacky here, just some very solid, very dependable, serviceable brawlers. It's in the 8-bit from Joker, I mean, if that's where he ends up going, it's a real opportunity to make flashy plays with cheat cartridge moving around the map. So you round this out with Lola again, really reasonable, sort of mid to long range kind of brawler, and again, she hits like an absolute truck when the Megalomania is active. Yeah, it's a great pairing. Often we see that kind of Bell and Lola idea coming into force. It's, it hasn't been so heavily utilized recently in the EMEA region on this particular map, but I admire that for coming in with it. I think many teams kind of forget about it. What a reply totem going to pick to round off this comp. It is lacking a little bit of range. I don't know whether they're going to go Rico. That's more of a North America Bonnie coming in instead. Again, having something which can continuously pressurize the save keeps your eyes on the objective. Yeah, look, we saw it in that first series there as well, picked up, and Shitampa was able to you know, use her to harass the save pretty safely. The range is quite impressive, even if the fire rate isn't stellar. But then when you know you can dive in all in that safe and really start to break it down, Shitampa especially showed us some flashy moments on that pick. So you got what you wanted. You got a little bit more range here for this composition. How do you feel these stack up? I think it's be quite close. I think that if Batra can just keep Reply Totem away from their safe and keep the spawn cycle in their favor, that's going to be the key. Ultimately, having that 8-bit, you know, really can gain so much damage. With that damage booster, maybe even a damage gear and, you know, uh, extra credits on the safe, you're going to be piling in so much damage, and Batra cannot afford that. And Maru instantly opens up the right-hand side of the map with that piggy bank here, just to make sure he can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with RBM. Maori here, scary prospect, slow, but pretty durable as far as hard hitters go. And there's that first attack destroyed here. Opens up the mid now for Payne to assist in the side lanes. Great connection there from Maori, honestly. Everything really laying into Payne. But with the cover down, it is going to expose the damage booster on the aggressive side of things for Reply Totem. So they do have to time that carefully, get some takedowns and make sure that Vatra haven't really got a response. It's a 3% lead so far, just a little bit, but it would be enough if the timer runs out. The real power play moment for Maori here, of course, who not only is getting his damage booster, but also the speed. So it makes it a little bit easier to juke these shots coming in from Payne, or so we thought. Now Payne can step up, get rid of that damage amplifier, make it harder for Maru now to win that side fight. Joker tries to collapse here, it's going to be be super thrown out by Maru, but RBM's able to take him down, 2v1. And this is the thing now, Maru is so slow and sluggish, RBM getting some great fire down on the right-hand side as Payne comes in with another supply drop. Two out of three from Vatra now, all souped up, and this is where the damage starts to flow. If Vatra can value their lives, they're only going to get stronger. A lot of nest eggs on the map, Joker got marked as well, so this is a very scary prospect now for the Bonnie. How does Joker stay on his two feet? I like Maori here trying to pressure Payne away, who's actually wrapped around the side and looks for some safe damage, but Vatra now might be falling behind as Joker looks to pressure. Maru also going to go there. Are these two teams going to go for it all in? RBM's doing great though. Gets Joker taken care of, and now it's that 1v1 that he's looking for. Maru stuck. Yeah, he's got to make a decision now for the damage. 
but still very high in HP. RBM though could go down if he's not careful. Vatra have a lead, but it's starting to slip. Pain takes a beating in the middle part of the map, and again, that area of the wall knocked out allows one Carlos to find Maru. Another damage there, but it's going to be a great mark coming in from the belt. Vatra just behind, but Pain looking to try and even up the score. It's going to be a 1% difference going to the last 10. So incredibly really close. Vatra here trying to make their final push. They have got the lead, but only by 1%. They've got the fan now for their lives as Maori approaches. Maori! Approaches! Oh! Is it going to be a tie? Is it going to be a tie? What a result! But it doesn't go anywhere! It's back to the beginning, but it just goes to show how close these two teams really are. Now, you've done this a while, Ark. You know, some would consider you a veteran, grizzled veteran, perhaps, <laughs> you know what I mean? Not, not like myself in other ways. How often do you see this? How often do you see a draw on heist? At, at, you know, at that kind of stage, so rare. It really is. You can get a draw at 0% to 0%. That's actually sometimes more common, to be completely honest. But my word, it just goes to show the awareness, doesn't it, of both teams. They're, they're timing their runs, but ultimately that 1% for Maori there was so, so clutch. RBM able to help out in mid start to collapse here. Leaving two players up for Reply Totem right now. Bartramo takes a bit of that early damage, just 3%. Maru's struggling to deal with RBM, and when Pain gets involved, it's almost unwinnable. Keeping Maori back and trying to get the angle between Pankolas and Pain. Pankolas with the pickup. Great stuff from him. Nestex still there on the map. Has a great takedown there between RBM and Pain. They're really starting to make this work a much, best, much, much better start here for Vatra. Hard to win a 2v3 when you one of the enemy sidelaners can collapse and make it a 2v1 in that part of the map. So Reply Totem just struggling, not being at full strength for the first sort of 30 seconds of the round. Pain has to back up here. Mari getting aggressive. Joker going in. RBM can't stand the heat. And now Joker gets to advance. Has to walk right up to the safe though. So instead, he'll set about getting rid of Pain. Maru taking down though, so that aggressive spurt will be cut short. I've got to say, you know, for Vatra there, that could have gone from bad to worse. They were able to secure the kills. They needed to deflate the aggressive nature of that push from Reply Totem. As such, they are able to reserve some valuable HP on that safe there. Great takedown on the left here. Maori is now pressurizing it. Joker as well. It's just so, so dangerous. Dangerous. Bonnie, isn't he? It's very dangerous here, Ark, now. Is Maori's able to move up with that damage amplifier. Vatra not taking any damage on the safe in that foray. So Maori forced to respect the defenders here. RPM gets a nice licking there on Enmari. It's going to slow him down. It's Joker trying to command some presence in the mid. There's been a lane switch. And Juan Carlos has been doing work. Everyone is souped up as a result of those supply drops now. And this is why we're seeing some swifter takedowns as the reply to them struggling just a little bit. And if they go down in this mid, it's going to be more damage for Vatra oh. and placing them on the back foot. I love that supply drop on the enemy. Save for one Carlos there. Get a bit of cheeky free percent. This puts Vatra now in a bit more of a comfortable position, but that might not last. Oh, oh, oh Maori. A salvo drops Vatra safe below Totems. And now it's going to be Joker going for the all in. He gets a good amount of damage on that landing. Beautiful staggering, isn't it? But Juan, can Juan Carlos do this? It's body blocking there for days from Reply Totem. They're unable to hang on. They will take the first game. But what a close one. It was honestly, for me, from Reply Totem there, genius. The way they slowly stagger towards the safe mid, they were just constantly keeping Vatra. You know, having to defend the situation, they couldn't go on the aggressive. Yeah, really safe uh, approach to that round there. You kind of thought that, you know, Mari was looking to apply, uh, apply pressure with the 8-bit there by throwing that damage amp forward, but he actually sort of backs off, and Joker's all in, gives him the buffer they need to win the round. Well, one nest deck down there for Pain early on. Looking to get that set up again to get the most amount of value from the roughs. Fly Totem as well. Slow and steady, and you, you can afford to do that on a map like Safe Zone. Just keep your distance, try to get some utility down until you get that Bonnie Super to be able to go in aggressively there. The Fly Totem, though, are getting a bit close for comfort towards their safe. Joker making maximum use of that cover, but that will now no longer be available to him. Nestek right there in the middle means the Joker needs to be careful of approaching in Megalovania. Yep, gonna make it RBM flattening Joker. And he's gonna be able to move in here and take down the damage amp now. Mari is untethered and doesn't have that speed boost any longer. Maru gonna choose to break Mark. the left-hand side. And I think that's a wise choice. Sandbags will help out a little bit for defensiveness. His pain comes in to help, but not gonna be able to secure it. Mari now spawning back in. Pain low and goes down, making it that three versus two that they were dreading.
Batra unable to take advantage of Maori being out of the game for a while. Oh. And now this might come back to hurt them. But Megalovania popped again and RBM pressuring that safe down. A lovely salvo of damage. While Maori's trying to deal with the side lane, he's getting pressured by that bell constantly. And one Carlos collapses there. Maru falling. Gonna be a trade though. And Maori out of the pitch though. This is scary. Joker can't double back. The scoreline is always so close with these two teams on this particular map. Joker, though, has got to go back here and heal up accordingly as the last, well, another supply drop coming down now. Two out of the three on the side of Batra. Soups up as the 42nd minute of approaches. Joker here just trying to juggle that time, but Pain is, is really tapping on this bell. Now, Mari limited opportunities to protect the damage booster here. Pain able to find Joker now, and you can collapse on Maru, who's in a lot of danger. Reply Totem need to find wow. a way to make up this deficit. We might be going to a decider here. Reply Totem need to maybe consider an all-in play. They need this mid-control. See, Batra, I, I like the way they came back there. They, they can afford to, they've got the lead, but they've got to defend this. They can't drop the ball here. The jumping from Joker is there, That's and one. he does survive it. Two versus three. Great take, that's from RBM, though. Maru comes in, is it going to be nine? It's going to be so close yet again. again. No way! No way, it can't! It can't, surely! Mary coming in! He's done it! That's the damage he needs! Reply Totem! Take the set in spectacular fashion! Well, we said it. They might have to consider an all-in at the end of that round, and an all-in is what they do. It's gonna be the dive in there from Body to start it up. Joker wants to get there. He actually walks into a nest egg, gets slowed up, and he's caught out in the open with no range available to him. But it's Mari saving the day. Walks on up there with 8-bit, plants himself down and says, that safe belongs to me. So exciting, isn't it? It really is. Just the micro plays with Reply Totem. And so calm in that respect at the same time. I think it goes to show again just their level of professionalism. They're just not in that headspace where they're panicking. It's just collected and so controlled in their approach. Very close stuff. Very, very much indeed, but Vatra just coming a little bit behind, and that, no, again, from Reply Totem, just goes to show how well they fare in this matchup. Again, I think, you know, this was really foreshadowed by both coaches coming into this game, saying, oh, we think we're like each other's mirror image. You know what I mean? Like, from different regions across, uh, you know, across the Atlantic Ocean, we really feel like we have the same style. But look at this, by the way. Everyone's trying to body block from Mari's damage, but he just gets enough there with the last couple of seconds of the round. I mean, you can't write this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. That was absolutely stunning. And yeah, look at the amount of damage, by the way, that Vatra are able to do by comparison. And still, they drop the set. It's the power of roughs, honestly. And, you know, look at that. It really does go to show how well Reply Totem did under that much pressure, doesn't it? I mean, it was such a, such a tough moment at the end there because, you know, it was a draw until that trickle of damage came in and you've got to then body block every single shot. You don't have much space to breathe and, you know, it was just a bit too much for Vatra. It's been said at the start of the game, Vatra Gaming potentially the most successful NA and Latam North team in the second half of the season are now staring down the barrel of an early exit from our World Finals. No more second chances for this team. This set must belong to them, otherwise it's all over. Yeah, it's now or never for Vatra, well, at least now until next year. <laughs> they've uh, they've got to start to get the momentum. They had that first game in this series under their belt, but the reply of Reply Totem really was that to be marveled at. Brawl Ball is obviously a very fast-paced game, therefore you've got to consider a lot of brawlers that you know, can really wrap and tie things up very quickly. I want to see that Max ban, and I am going to see it from Reply <laughs> Totem, and the Gale ban as well from Vatra. So, so far, so good for me. Snap pick the Gene straight away. Vatra want to make sure that they have the ability, of course, to get a brawler advantage uh, and start to push up the field here. B going to be picked up now on the side of Joker, and Pinhole Punt, of course, is going to be our map here. Crow comes in. That's a surprising one for me, but I mean, again, having that slowing toxin, it's going to pair really, really nicely with B and just ensure those amplified shots just keep trickling in. Now, this is a tankier map. They've got the Gale Band in play on the side of Vatra. It would be the right time to bring something in, but the Ash Band there from Reply Totem is securing, therefore, out of the mix, the one that they feared the most. It does still have some options, though. Carl gonna come in, and we've seen a lot of that particular brawler today. I mean, he is just absolutely insane. Uh, especially when it comes to the old go aggressive strategy. Penny here coming in. So he's actually seen her band a couple of times, but now Vatra decide it's time to go for it. Yeah, and the pairing again between the Gene and the Carl. You know, getting that magic hand to connect and then having Carl just really come in and get and ensure that swift takedown. 
I just, I, I'm kind of curious as to how Reply to are going to tie up this comp. I've not really seen them run this before in Pinhole Punt. Oh, Fast, no. of course it is. <laughs> We've waited a while to see it all day. And I'm sure many at home wondering like how it's taken this long to see it. Give us the lowdown on Buster for those maybe not super familiar with this newest brawler. If he's got his shield up, just stop shooting. Just, just don't feed into it because it's going to reflect back and cause the damage to yourselves. And that is going to then allow your team to have a great push going forwards in Brawl Ball. It's a real menace. It's had obviously a recent nerf, but it's still in a very good place. Remember Buster charges super by staying close to teammates. So expect that to be a factor here. But Joker gets absolutely smashed early on the round. Maru's just going to clean up though, and he swoops on in. Mari finds then Juan Carlos and the salty barrel is down, but he's just continuing to tap. It's really great awareness, the slow connections as well. Oh my word, Mari, you've excelled yourself, boy. Oh my goodness, RBM just able to scoop the ball up. Not a great start for Vajra, they've got to settle themselves here. Maybe not expecting to see the buster at this point in the game, but they need to have a, a plan to deal with it now. I, you don't shoot at the montage. Yeah, you've got to try to get from the side there, but the pressure is really mounting in this position. Pain, though, and misses the magic hand. That was the real saving grace that they had in this position. But now, the painting turret coming down, it's going to slow the pace a little bit and allow them to just kind of reset. Maybe the jitters starting to get to Vacha there, of course, as that gene pool would have been absolutely monumental for them here. Maru again, montage. It's going to be sweeping for Joker. He tries to go for the all-in. Instantly, though, disintegrates. That's why Penny is a great pick to have. It just gives you the time that you need, and then on the aggressive, it can do very much the same idea of allowing you time to maneuver the ball around. And just taking it very slow and cautious. The healing puffs coming in from Pain, and now starting to move down the right hand side, bringing the ball forward slowly. They got out of that situation really quite well. Reply Totem had the map control, but they can't convert it into a goal. So that's definitely going to be at the top of their to do list now as they approach. Maru just flattens RBM there. Maori also trying to peek in from the left-hand side. That's a magic hand connection, and Vatra now can start to work. Yeah, that's great from Payne. Just, he needs to keep doing that consistently so, and they're already starting to deflate a lot of this aggressive nature of Reply Totem. So far, they've been you know, keeping Vatra back this entire <laughs> game, but they haven't been able to get a goal yet, and I think that says quite a lot for this situation. They don't have any real terrain destruction ability here. That definitely might hurt them. They have to score a goal via more conventional means here. Definitely looking for an absolute team wipe before they can advance. Oh, that could be dangerous. All right. Maru falls back. Tail spin there from RBM. Knows he has the durability. Honey Molasses thrown down, and Maru's good on the conversion. Maru is playing a great game, honestly. And in overtime as well, he's going to thrive. That's oh, the yeah. problem. And he just keeps connecting these shots. Payne has to go back now, but low HP means that he's going to have to reconsider it a little bit. All right, some of the map getting opened up a little bit more now, but it's Mari v Juan Carlos. Maru not in a position, rather, to do much with the ball. You're not going to walk it in. No! What? Are you kidding? No salty barrel. You, you've got to consider saving some of that utility, but that was why Reply Totem kept that control for such a long time. It just meant that it just dwindled down slowly but surely, and now Vatra are in a world of hurt. You didn't even look surprised there, <laughs> You've got to think about the late game. All right, RBM starting strong this time around, finding two big pickoffs. Great opening here. It should be a comfortable one for Vatra. Can they get there with Maru? Yep, he can't stop Juan Carlos. Even that score. This is exactly the response you need under the circumstances. You know, the, the pressure could not be higher here. Against the match point, you've got to start to get that early goal. And, you know, they've shown and demonstrated already that they can defend these moments. So a great start for them. They've got to maintain it. Trade to start the fight there. It's going to be Joker yoinked out of formation. Iron high from Mari, hoping to line up Juan Carlos. Having some difficulty zeroing oh. in on that penny and get picked off again. Show coming out, and that will, again, slow the pace just a little bit. With the positioning there from Vatra was great, honestly, just working those sides onto Maru. Maru as well, can't really push forwards now. His pain is very much aware. Maru low, this is starting to develop here. If pain can get forwards, Joker knows this and goes in there for aggressively. I love that play from Joker. It deflated so much of that situation that was starting to occur. Maru having used utility belt earlier on there is the map being opened up more. It means that he's a bit vulnerable at times. Vajra starting in a lead here in this second round. Honey Molasses throwing down the left-hand side. Juan Carlos sheepishly having to back away now under the effect of that slow. But Maru wants to push up. He wants to get aggressive. He might be looking for that target oh. here. Oh, 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 Maru slots it! What a shot! 
beautiful stuff. It really was to find the angle. The observation was there. Oh, it's <laughs> Reply Totem doing Reply Totem things here. And this could be the moment in which they were able to seal it. But Pain, great connection. Just able to turn the tide in the face of utter audacity by Reply Totem. Vatra able to stabilize here. Here no, comes the swoop though, no. here we go, RBM able to hang on there. That's the second unsuccessful full dive from Joker now, but Maru wants to try and follow up on some of the damage done. Maru gets one, Carlos 2v2 and Maru is encroaching. I love this plays from Reply Totem, which just feels like a bit of a matter of time. And the deflection <laughs> again is there from Maru, as now his team start to join in what is a great spot to have with 10 seconds on the clock going into overtime. Yep, map control for Reply Totem here, looking to try and send Vatra Gaming home. Overtime coming at us. Blink and you'll miss it, ladies and gentlemen. Now the map is open. It's go time. Hey, needs that pull. And he is getting some value along the way for it. If he can combine it with RBM, it will help out considerably. As Joker goes in a bit overzealous, but keeping the pressure on. Maru and Maori are staying really firm to this push. He got it, Maru. You thought he might have overextended there for a moment. He tries to juke the shot from Payne, but he can't escape. Payne is going to wait for reinforcements here. Magic Hand is now available. 32 seconds left in the round and Reply Totem are regrouping. Yeah, just taking it slow, allowing Maori to try to keep the pressure. He's got Amplified Shot now as well, and Payne has got to therefore be very cautious in his step. The ball, as Joker can jump in on that at any moment if he wants to. Maori pushing forwards, great stuff. Where's the ball going to go here? Joker pushing up. Dangerous, could be dangerous here. RBM on the ball though, eight seconds left in the round. Here comes Payne, trolling down the middle part of the map, but Einheim slows him up. Maori trying to deal with RBM. He's able to keep the ball from going in. And we have a tied game. Pretty insane overtime moment there. Again, so many close calls, isn't it? You know, both teams know exactly what to do under pressure. I think that's very, very clear. It's been a whisker between it all the way through. But we go again. RBM wants to push Joker back. He might be thinking twice about that. Slowing Toxin makes it hard to pursue, but Payne chips in there from the mid. Finds that first pickoff. Ooh, Maru goes down here. Could be an opening if they want to try to make a push for it. Payne Hi, connects. Great stuff from him. Joker. Can we get the ball clear here? Maybe get a jump down too low. Pick up is there. He's been getting punished much of this round. RBM goes deep on Maru now. It's only Maori left. Bad situation potentially becoming worse. Here's the dive from Joker. He knows RBM slowed up. Great pick off and Payne's in no position to push the advantage. You need these aggressive plays. It just helps so much the super passes there. Joker is going to make his He's way forward. He's going to make it. Oh, missed pull it. And Joker scores. That is always going to be the risk in a situation like that. Go down in brawlers and have someone like Joker walk it in, the least durable member of this Reply Totem team. Honey Molasses won't slow RBM down there, though, and Vatra needs to get moving. Yeah, there's uh, very little time now to do so. And Reply Totem know how close they really are. Maru surviving as well on here, despite the flames on the map. Now, the inevitable happens and the push forwards. But Vatra cannot miss this opportunity. They need to make this count. Perfect. Can't ask for much more than RBM. RBM goes in, but the ball's out of control of Vatra. Maru's able to pick it up and stick it in the corner. Golden opportunity there, goes begging. Yeah, and this is the moment that they've got to make those you know, moments count, honestly. Now, they're going to regroup into the mid and just keep that pressure on, and that's exactly what Reply to need to do. They've got the goal. They haven't got to do anything at all except defend. 45 seconds, all that stands between Vatra Gaming and the early exit from the World Finals. Ball back in the corner. Joker just testing mid here. Reply Totem don't need to overextend. They have the advantage, but RBM gets flattened anyway. Joker's able to dive on in. 30 seconds left, and the ball is tantalizingly far out of Vatra's reach. It's looking bleak for Vatra, and they need to get a push. The pawn is there, but it's not the result he wants to bring in. RBM picks up the slack, he's right go. hook in. He's got to go aggressive here onto Maori. 15 seconds Try. remain. They won't be able to do this. Joker's it's pretty close. Pain slow. Maru's going to be back in the fight now. Pain has no ability to really push the advantage, and that's going to be it. What a sad end for Vatra Gaming here as Reply Totem stand tall. They shepherd the ball and say, this town belongs to us. And with a sweep, no less, as well on the world stage, that says to me that they mean business. Many expected Reply Totem to have the edge of their land experience, but Vatra made it so, so close along the way. 
It could have gone a number of different ways, but today it was all about reply totem. And it's as good a time as any to say that we were wrong in our prediction, right? Teddy was right. Yeah, Teddy got it. <laughs> we maybe expected a lot from Vatra coming into this tournament, right? There's a lot on the line for them here, and it's pretty intimidating. But now we see why reply totem were taking things seriously. They weren't pranking, they weren't running away, they weren't goofing off. They were in the tank preparing these strategies, and it pays off. They get themselves a date now with Zeta Division 1 in the quarters. <laughs> that is a tasty snack right there, Ooh. isn't it? It really is. I mean, you know, this was the prediction that I had the biggest trouble with. I took my time with this one. The others I felt pretty comfortable with. Just copium at this point, Ark. I'm yeah, like, I know. Yeah, I'm trying to excuse, regain mate. some. <laughs> just own it like me, you know? <laughs> Oh, I mean, I tell you what, Reply Totem have to be pleased with this result. Again, because we said, all right, a bit of a rough couple months in that EMEA region. Whereas Vitra looks so dominant here, but this might really give us an indication of how, as a region, EMEA is stacking up against the rest of the field. Their number two seed absolutely smashes Vatra Gaming here in a sweep. There were some close moments, some exciting times to be sure, but it's not enough ultimately from the second seed from NA and Latam North to advance. What a blockbuster we have now with Reply Totem going up against Zeta Division 1. An incredible, incredible matchup. Yeah, good luck with your predictions on that <laughs> one. I mean, what can you say? I mean, that is just such a treat to have in store for us to come. But, you know, I, I'm so impressed in just the two games that we've witnessed so far, yes. how close the skill level is towards each other. You know, some of these underdogs are really cutting the mustard. I love this. This is what the World Finals is all about. Our expectations being completely smashed to smithereens in both matchups. First, it's Chasma. EU putting up an incredible fight, a valiant defeat that they suffered. And then Reply Totem saying, hang on, we've got another level to go to. We're going to go beyond our limits. So far, so good again. Let's hope they've not played their final quite yet, though. They're definitely going to need to regroup, recoup, and be ready for the kings of that East Asian region. And, you know, going back to that quote from Inso as well, you know, he said, didn't he, that, you know, whoever wins that match, and he has got that match now, will take it all. So we'll see. We will see. Much more World Finals to be played, ladies and gentlemen, live here in Disneyland. We've got two more best of fives coming right up, so don't go anywhere. This is the Brawl Stars 2022 World Finals.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Brawl Stars World Finals. We got a packed venue here today and two matches already out of the way. Two more to come. I'm ready, set, and I'm so excited to be here alongside you, Teddy. How are you feeling, man? Man, those two first matches, especially that second one, phenomenal stuff. I'm, I'm not even ready myself for everything that's coming next. They had us in the green room and we were just jumping out of our seats. Let's actually reflect on how those two matches went and what is to come as we progress along to the bracket. Already, Zeta Division One in reply totem firmly locked in in those quarterfinals in some pretty convincing matches to come. Game, rather, match number three and number four, AC Milan Clash versus SDM coming right at you very soon in Stalwart Esports versus Team Queso to follow. Yeah, the rest of the bracket will be played out tomorrow. When I say rest of the bracket, I mean the, runa, the round, rather, of 16. But, wow, I mean, those two opening matches alone just made my day, and those two next ones are arguably even closer matched. Well, let's see what we thought on who is going to win, who is going to win those past matches as well, and catch up with how our predictions are going. You know what? The caster hive mind, it's not looking super hot right now. We're one for two, but you're looking pretty nice there with the prediction of the totem victory. All I can say is that some casters got their predictions right, some got them wrong. That, 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 that's it, you know? Got to stay humble uh, about it. Two more to get correct today for the, for the 100%. That's my goal. Hey, call me wrong, but there's nothing wrong about supporting your home region, right? That said, if you want to submit some predictions of your own, which you should, go over to event.brawlstars.com, submit your predictions, interact with the stream, and give your thoughts on who's going to win the match, as well as innings, winning some awesome in-game rewards. I hear there's a pretty cool skin at the end of the road. Yeah, and pins and rewards. It's the best viewing experience, so big recommendation to go watch the stream from over there. Well, without further ado, we got to talk about our third match of the day, Ace. AC Milan Clash versus STMN. AC Milan Clash, the first seed from the LADAM South region versus STMN, barely scraping by to claim that third spot in North America. Yeah, very different stories on those two sides. AQM quite dominant, right? Whether it's in the BSC winning uh, a whole bunch of monthly finals, fine, as a matter of fact. But even in third party events, they were the dominant team of LATAM himself. STMN, a bit of a scrappy year, but they popped off in the last couple of months. And now they're at the peak of their form. High expectations on, on their end for the World Finals. And it seems like we both thought that STMN was going to take this one, but I think it's going to be extremely scrappy. It's got to be a 3-2 victory for whoever takes the win in this one. Let's take it over to the stage to welcome our first team. De retour pour notre troisième match. Il y a beaucoup d'ambiance. Paris, est-ce qu'on est prêt? Bonne ambiance sur place, évidemment, pour le troisième match. 
Ça va commencer ici à Paris pour Disneyland, à Zemilan Clash AC Milan Clash, the number one seed from Lad himself, and in fact, the very first team to qualify for the World Finals across all regions this year. Yeah, a very, very strong team. Have some experience in international play as well. Uh, the core team of Kaodong and Vitizim was ex affiliate at the last World Finals in 2021. Got top 16 there, eliminated first round. At MSI this year, with Moitab joining the team as well, they, they left top eight, so both big international events. They ended up losing the first round. They are hoping to get so much more, and they've grinded the entire year to get there. It's their chance to make it happen now. Certainly unfortunate outcomes for this team, but they have one final chance this year to bring things back. They got a little shown up by Zeta Division at the last World Final. Of course, Zeta Division went on to take the entire thing, now facing versus ST Min. ST Min, they made it to the round of eight last year. Definitely going to be probably a more convincing game for these guys. We'll have to see how they face versus ST Min. Our next team here, welcome them to the stage. Et leurs adversaires, évidemment, il est du côté nord-américain. Plusieurs pays qu'on accueille ici. Canada, Mexique, USA, STMA Bobby, OG, and Zar. Sans is going to be watching from home this time around, as he couldn't quite be with us, but we're thinking about him here too. Wow, what a powerhouse of a roster. As I mentioned earlier, a bit of a tough year. We weren't even sure they would make it. They were not even sure. I remember talking to Bobby a couple months back. He was there like, I I'm ready not to make it to Worlds. But obviously, the hard work paid off. They are here. They're at the top of their form right now. And they've had some disappointing results in international events in the past. They want to show that they are not only the best team in NA, but maybe even the best team in the world. Without a doubt, I mean, this team, a lot of people seem to think could go all the way, but maybe it's just NA vibes getting to their head a little bit. We'll have to see whether the NA vibes are enough to propel this team to a victory versus an extremely scrappy and extremely consistent Laddy himself roster. That said, ST Min, you said they were in their their best form of the year, it looks like, and I completely agree. They've taken some very dominant victories, especially landing at the top of some brackets in some first places in the last month or so. So will they be able to generate that into some more momentum today? We'll only be able to find out once we get into these matches. Absolutely ready. And one of the big factors when it comes to LAN events, well, that's LAN event experience. And sure, AQM, they've had their fair share of experience, but as I mentioned, uh, ended up, you know, leaving rather early uh, most of the time. On the side of SCMN, it, it is quite a bit better. World Finals 2021, that was top eight, lost to Reply Totem. We know what those guys became now, <laughs> so no shame to that. MSI, top four, lost to Zeta one. So again, you know, no shame to that, absolutely not. Two monthly final wins this year, but also SPS and A, they were dominant. Also in Bogota, they beat Tribe on LAN. So at the moment, it, it seems like they might just be the best North American team when it comes to LAN events. No doubt, these guys, they are just crazy at LAN. And well, what do you know? We're at LAN. We'll have to see how their previous victories translate over into this big arena. Definitely a big crowd as well. I can only speculate as to how much the pressure might get to them because we did see the performance from AQM last year in front of a more intimate audience. But we did see the meta sort of arise as far as getting loud, getting proud as well, and sort of trying to intimidate your opponents with the loudness and with the expressions as well. And we saw that from SCM in full force. Yeah, this is going to be a super, super fun match. Both teams quite evenly matched for very different reasons, but it's just going to be a great one to witness here to settle uh, who will secure their spot in the top eight, make it all the way to day three. On the side of STMN, I, I have to say they are going to be my favorites uh, for this one. I feel like they just have a little bit of the edge when it comes to experience in the land setting. Uh, experience in general, we're talking about Bobby OG, some of the longest lasting players in the entire competitive scene. Uh, and they're in great form. Uh, there were questions, you know, even last year of if they wanted still to compete the upcoming year. And their duo has held so strong. Czar adding a lot to the table as well. Recently, Sans too, again, can't quite make it here today, but what a powerhouse of a team for STM Man. AC Milan Clash better be prepared.
no doubt. I mean, SG Men, this is the team that we are familiar with in a land setting. It is unfortunate that Sands could not be here, but we'll just have to use that and draw upon what we've seen from this team previously, where they did unfortunately go down to Zeta Division 1 when it came to that MSI, but I believe a lot of people were impressed with how they were able to perform versus that team. And of course, we saw them play earlier today. It has been very well proven. Zeta Division 1, they can bleed, but can they be brought to their knees? Only SK was able to answer that question. Is Stamina able to offer sort of the same retaliation? It's a mystery. We'll only be able to tell if we see that matchup happen. And in order to do that, they'd have to face versus Ace AQM and take a win here. Yeah, talking to both teams, uh, they, they, they all kind of think they're the favorites in this one, which is interesting and says how closely matched it is uh, truly. On paper, this could absolutely go both ways. I, I think the caster prediction somewhat reflected that too. And uh, a lot of the players I've talked to said, yeah, ACMM and Clash, they've been playing really well. SCM and maybe a little bit more inconsistent, but yeah, this late year form they have is very, very scary. and. It, despite being the third seed of NA, we just saw seed two of North America uh, go home. Uh, a lot of teams consider them and rate them higher than that and have higher expectations fr uh, from them. Love the basketball and, you know, NA sports jerseys uh, on the SCMN side to really bringing the, the vibes from home, making themselves comfortable on the stage. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? You gotta bring it back. I mean, the, the Brawl House was quite comfy here, but if you're able to wear some comfortable uh, sort of athleisure on the stage, then that can maybe ameliorate the some of the tensions. Breathe. Yeah, yeah, I mean, okay, whatever, whatever. Any <laughs> vibes all the way. I'm not even gonna pretend like I'm not a biased caster out here. No, no, still. STMN, I mean, definitely the focus of the discussion here for the English-speaking community, but for AQM, right? We talked about favorites here, and probably the favorite of the Spanish-speaking community and when it comes to Latin America overall, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Ready, I'm going to ask you a question. If, you know, you had to make odds yourself before we see the predictions from everyone at home, what, what would yours be? Is it, you know, 50-50, 60-40? Where you at? Going 65-35, but favoring STMN, I really do think that no matter where this match goes, no matter which way it goes, whether it goes to AQM, whether it goes to Stamina, it's gonna be a set five. It's got to be close. These are two absolute powerhouses, and even speaking to some of the players from STMN particularly, they seem to think that it is going to be an extremely close match, and I would rate that as definitely a good assessment of this situation. Your number three seed in North America, as strong as you may be perceived to be, as strong as you perform in other lands, this is BSC, and you took number three seed, you're gonna be face versus a very high seeded team in another region, and you deserve the high seed if you are the first to qualify in your region. That's a very valid point because, yeah, they kind of brought this up on themselves, you know, with that slow start of the year and some shakiness in the mid uh, uh, part two. Uh, but at least they're here, and that's already something something that I'm sure makes you very happy uh, too, Ready. And uh, they, they, they've come here to perform. Uh, I, I think that, you know, uh, they now have the experience behind their backs to come here confident and, and aiming at much more than just that first round. It all starts here. With the team that loses here, they're, no matter how ambitious they are, it, it ends here for 2022. But uh, they're very hungry teams that have had uh, some great successes in the past, and they're looking to repeat that this year as well. Final stand for both of the teams in this upcoming match, and it is definitely going to be a doozy, a big barn burner, too. Look at the enthusiasm of the audience as well. I see some tribe signs, not a whole lot of SUMN or AQM, but at least you got to appreciate the competitive spirit of the live audience here. It's been a while since we've had one of those, and it's a wonderful spectacle to behold. Well, here we go. Shooting Star is going to be our first map as Draft is going to be kicking in shortly. 59 to 41. That, that's closer. I, I would have said 60 40 for me, so I'm very happy with uh, what you guys predicted at home. I think it's a very close one. We both predicted SCMN for this one, and uh, I mean, you guys at home mostly did too. Yeah, check out these rosters, and we're going to be moving into Shooting Star as well. First pick going the side of AC Milan Clash. Countdown over. What is it going to be? Got to go with the Sprout and assessing the bands here as well. On the side of AC Milan Clash, Max, Gus, and Brock. On the side of SDMN, Tick, Piper, and Eve. That does leave a couple of other throwers left. Grom, maybe the more likely of the two that are remaining, but Sprout is a first pick that's definitely quite risky. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, you know, you really would like that tick here. It is banned out by SCMN. The Brock was banned by ACM and Clash. So they knew that unless they banned both Sprout and Tick, uh, they would still have a very solid thrower at hand. Gene is a good answer. One that will, you know, start off a little bit slower, but if you can get a great pull to open up those walls or just any sort of clutch pull that turns around the lead, gives you the advantage, uh, that is going to be the chance to do so. And a bit of a comfort pick for SCMN too. Certainly, and especially for Bobby here on the gene. Here comes the nanny as well. And this one actually is shocking to me that we have not seen this brawler banned out or even first picked, actually. This is typically the absolute gimme brawler for this map. And if you don't first pick it, then your enemy is going to go for it. And SCMN, I would say definitely wise for going for this brawler. It is really one of the safest picks that you can go with, especially because you can get kills from max health on an enemy brawler without even putting yourself in danger. Get real up close to them, and with autofocus, you can even one-shot one -shot some brawlers. Absolutely, and I think the reason they went Sprout over Nani first pick is just because of that Piper man, right? Uh, Piper is going to be uh, very, very scared of a Nani. We'll see the B, actually, uh, as the answer here from AC Milan Clash, trying to, uh, you know, get some more range available to their side. Uh, I think it's a very good idea, to be fair, just because you never know if there's a bit of a more aggressive or tanky idea for that final pick of STMN. And instead of Clash, they will settle with the Lola as their third and final pick. Final pick coming in here, and this is when we usually see some of the more aggro, sort of tanky brawlers arrive. And Fang is definitely a popular pick when it comes to bounty. However, it might be kind of risky going to brawlers such as B and Lola, who can pump out a lot of damage in close range. Buzz also comes to mind, but could also go a completely different direction and play this one safe. Here's the Carl, actually, and that is going to be a brawler that can get in close range. Sprout is especially going to be victim. B also could potentially have some issues with this, but Carl's still going to be outranged by virtually all all of these picks here and could face some adversity as a result. Yeah, I like that Carl pick a whole lot. I mean, the mobility, there's just not that much that will counter it on uh, on, on the blue side of things. And uh, Sprout is going to be vulnerable. The B is going to have to be very careful. Good discipline on that super. But here we go. AC Milan Clash versus STMN. And Blue Star obviously picked up by the Carl. That gadget to early on secure the lead. Always practically a free blue star when you have a gadget at the ready. Here comes the peep already from the back lines. It's actually going to be breaking open a wall. Not all of the walls broken open. Motep still going to be clinging on for dear life around this one obstacle. Meanwhile, around the right side, Hedge placed down. Things are really moving back for STMN. They could find themselves in danger, but they seem to be quite comfortable on this very defensive position. Yeah, good pressure from STMN to push them back and create a little bit more space. They want to open up that map. Don't have a whole lot of options to do so. Dog is low HP. Zark, not quite gonna go for it just yet. Bobby is low as well, needs to be incredibly careful. One shot from BTZM would turn things around. Dog aggressive against Zar, and it's gonna be a trade, but STMN with that blue start. That gave them a one-star lead now. Let's see if AC Milan Clash can strike back as we head in the final minute of this first game. Bobby's patiently waiting inside of this bush, maybe trying to threaten Kyodog or Motep, but they can both counter out the gene pull. Here comes another hedge down from BT Zim. Still a slight corridor for Zara to face through, but he's not going to be keeping that wall up. Once again, placing around the left side and also pinching things in. Great kill from OG on the Kyodog. Zara now trying to get some position around the right side. And here comes the peep. It's going to be going for VT Zim or Motep. Either one, an attempt to oh, tank. Oh, wow, oh. amazing piloting there. Another pull in, and Kyodog goes down. STM in there leading by such a large margin. Great kill from Zara and AC Milan Clash have a huge margin to make up. What a team wipe from STMN. Nine stars in the lead and AC Milan Clash, this is their final shot as an, as an answer. 15 seconds left, the pull from Bobby connects. BT Zim is taken out of the picture. Just a couple more seconds here and STMN should be taking that first game unless they can eliminate OG and Zar. They are being pinched, OG is low, Kyodok goes in. Doesn't find oh. either. That's gonna be first game going towards STMN. Very, very close there towards the end and really expertly played by STMN in particular. Appreciate the consistent control and the consistent aggression of AQM. However, they were not able to turn that into an advantage in terms of stars or even in terms of kills, which is not usually the sort of way that you see this map played. It's either played extremely aggro at the enemy side in order to get a victory, or you play for more control around the middle of the map. STMN seeming like, uh, they're absolutely comfortable playing defense for the entire game. Once again, grabbing that blue star from Zar, a free one, and already aggression in from the guy. Yeah, lovely pickup there from Zar as VTZM goes down. Blue star again, picked up by Zar too. 
So far, he's been doing a phenomenal job on the call. Kyodar getting up close, though, needs to be careful. He's one shot, the pull from Bobby connects, and that's five now in favor of SCMN. Motep continues to try and find position around the right side. Here comes the peep, but it's going for the wall break, actually. Already saw all four of those walls broken open on the left side. It seems to be giving a slight advantage to Kyodog. Meanwhile, big damage coming in. Here comes Zara. He's just looking to peel some of the attention off of his teammates. Great kill with return to Cinder. Another one onto Kyodog, and Motep's running for the hills. He's right back over to the right side to get another push going. Whenever it feels like AC Milan Clash are starting to get some good positioning, Stamina somehow have been shutting them down. I think a miss pull from Bobby there, but there's a peep heading straight towards VTZM, and he runs into it to 13 now in favor of Stamina Esports. And AC Milan Clash, they need a miracle to save them from losing this first set. I have to commend the great dodges from Kyodog so far. OG certainly a tough opponent to face versus. Here comes the hedge in on the left side, and Zar just keeping himself alive, popping that protective pirouette to take a little bit more damage. Here comes the Ego run the left side. Big pinch here from VTZM. Bobby's all alone. One, two kills for AC Milan Clash. They are still a significant margin behind SCMN, though. Yeah, right, it's been OG getting so many kills this game, sitting on six stars now. He would be a very good target to take down, but another pull from Bobby OG to confirm the kill and start creating some space on the left-hand side should be more than enough to secure this first set in favor of the Americans. They say that Caster shouldn't talk about the draft, but I think we need to talk about this one. Nanny, it was shown in the stars, it was shown in the gameplay, and even in the pick phase, it was an omen of success for STMN. This pick worked absolute wonders for the guys, going completely undefeated that entire round. OG, he had seven stars, he had the blue star at the end of the game, just amazing draft and consistent stuff from STMN. He had seven stars and the blue stars, and, and, and that's considering the fact he used his speed mostly to open up the map. It's not like he was getting like all the kills with his feet. No, he was just hitting those 3k shots from before, getting that chip damage too, not letting them uh, just heal back up. And uh, that, that calm from SCMN is a trap. Once those walls are opened up, especially with some more fragile brawlers like, like Sprout and V, the chip damage and the, the heal cancel potential on the side of Stamina is huge because whenever they push up on the side of AC Milan Clash, there's going to be some little Gene shots and Nani shots that just trickle your HP down and they can't afford to fall back. We're really over committing a bit too and AC Milan Clash were punished big time. Big time, and they need to make sure that they make this happen in the draft in the upcoming set because I think that's really where the problem started to arise for them off of the neglect of picking Nanny. Now, I think though that this is very, very well known in Brawl. It's clear that they were going for something experimental and thought that they would be able to diff the Nanny, and at points, they were able to mechanic stiff on a few things, get great dodges in there, but at the end of the day, you really cannot contend with the peep constantly getting max damage on you and one-shotting some of your brawlers. Yeah, I mean, as soon as that draft was, was completed, uh, we, we could kind of tell that SCMN came in with an advantage there. I, I don't think it was unwinnable for AC Milan Clash, but it was so well executed by SCMN. And that's the thing, when you get undrafted, the only way you win is if there are some execution mistakes. If you start, you know, absolutely popping off, it is possible to, to come back. But SCMN, they were just super solid. Gene pools connecting way more often than not. And, and I mean, we saw the Nani plays from OG. We saw Zara pop off on the Carl too. And, and, and so often just creating space, you know, not letting Ace Man Clash reset. And that's why SCMN took that opening set. Well, set number two is upon us already. Bells rocking. Yet another map where it's going to be prioritized to stay alive, get some long range kills. Not going to see Nanny most likely, but when it comes to picks, Rico is always going to be a fairly strong pick up mid. Also, have to watch out for those throws. It's almost as if this map was made for Grom in some regards with a cross right down the middle. And Sprout, also one of those that you always have to watch out for. Tick, especially a threat at the moment with that new gear that gives his super even more health than Tick has to begin with. Yeah, well, it's going to be a Brock opening pick for SCMN. It was banned out in the first set, and uh, here's the interesting thing. I think a lot of the brawlers we saw either banned or played out in the previous set uh, are very much playable in Bell's Rock. I mean, if you think a, a, a Gene or brawlers like Rico that are going to be banned out here, there, there's a lot of potential. Carl also banned B as well. Uh, the, the double drawer ban on the side of AC9 Clash. Let's see what the reaction is here for Clash's side of things. I, I feel like they probably do want a wall breaker at some point as well on their side. Piper to try to capitalize on that map getting opened up. Won't have the same level of destruction capabilities that, that Brock will offer, but it can capitalize off it. 
Yeah, and they might have to rely on Bobby to break open some of those walls at the beginning of the match. They really want to utilize Piper's true power. Unless, of course, they decide to go for a wall breaker of their own. But the options, they're not too amazing. Colonel Revs can break open some walls, but even then, He's going to have to work for it pretty hard, just like Piper. Here comes the Gus as well, and this is going to be a strong power pick if they decide to compare or rather combine the shield with their last pick, which they can go for an aggressive brawler as long as STMN doesn't prepare adequately to counter it. Yeah, that shield that comes from the super from Gus in, in, in a late uh, round, that can be devastating when the zone just forces you in a, in a close combat uh, uh, sort of situation. It's incredible, but even before that, you know, keeping you up, keeping your allies up, getting that extra uh, reload speed as well. But most importantly, man, that gadget, just getting those skills secured is huge. Money. That's an <laughs> interesting pick here. It seems like SCMN really valued that pick highly. Looks like it. I mean, excuse me for saying we might not be seeing Nanny here because here she is. It, once again, is going to rely on a lot of wall break here. And I think this is pretty wise from SDMN because, well, Grom is still an option. Now, it's going to have to play very, very particularly on this map. Should he have been picked? Here's a Colonel Ruffs as well. And that's going to be controlling pretty much all the wall break options that AC Milan Clash have. Unless they decide they're going to go for something like Griff, it's only going to be Piper on their side. They're going to have to play wisely in terms of what they go for their last pick. Fang is typically one that comes to mind here, but if OG does have those sandbags down, he's going to be countering out Piper, he's going to be countering out Gus, and he's going to be countering out Fang. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they are going to want to go for something that can deal with those sandbags, don't have a whole lot of time left to choose, and it's going to be Squeak, uh, definitely an option that can, uh, uh, you know, make that work. <sighs> Looking at the comps, it, it's an interesting one, because both sides not really going for anything substantially, you know, wild or, or out of the ordinary. Uh, but I, I think both sides have their chances. I, I will say I like STMN Scomp just a little bit more, a bit more uh, simple, I think, to execute. And, you know, with the nerves and the pressure that you are going to have playing on the world stage, I think that can be quite a big advantage. Well, let's hop into it. Motep now coming up the right side. VTZM opting to take that mid lane, but already the walls are starting to break open. And Squeak relies a lot on having those corridors to fire down and play control around for the entire game. Already a lot of AQM backed into the very middle of the map. Kyo Dogs and Super Low double bounce there from Zar to grab the kill. OG falls though, and it's now down to a 2v2. Yeah, beautiful trade there. Pretty much saving that first round for AC Milan Clash, or at least not dooming it just yet as Zar. Trying to find some good bounces. Not so fortunate just yet as VTZM gets a beautiful connection onto him. Another one now. And that means super available for VTZM. If you get hit by any of those little pallets, that is going to be devastating. That slow is very unforgiving. And oh, Bobby, no. yeah, that's a big connection. Surely they should be able to capitalize. But Zar is trying to create some space. Not quite enough as Bobby pulls. Zar left in a 1v2 and not one. He is going to win eventually goes down, tries not to feed too many supers, but I mean, Motep is going to carry it over for the Gus. Well, already though, two walls have been broken open on STM inside, but Ace Mill and Clash, they might opt to play this one a little bit more defensively, trying to get the poison to close things in. Motep though, does go for the lane switch and also shields up Kyo Dog. BTZM forced out of position, even tapped up a little bit by the Asteroids. Oh, Here oh, comes oh, the kill oh. on the Zard. Great taps from Kyo Dog, and this is the hazard. When you open up the map versus Piper, she's going to go crazy. Another kill from Kyo Dog, and it's just Bobby left on the battlefield. There's the kill on the VT Zim. It's a 1v2. Bobby has the rocket fuel at the ready, but it might not be the right moment for this. Yeah, he's just going to go for a shot. Doesn't connect it either. Eventually, that's a, a, a beautiful triple from Kaidog. What a phenomenal performance from him. Exactly what they needed on the side of AQM. A game secured now. And I, I mentioned it earlier, you know, Piper had a capability to capitalize against those wall breakers on the side of SCMN. And I mean, Kaya Dog has been shining so far. Absolutely has, and can only expect that in the next game already. Wall broken open on the left side, not Kyo Dog's side, if you might notice that. Wow, great kill there with the return to Cinder. It's brought down to a 3v2. Kyo Dog needs the kill. Here's the homemade recipe. Nope, Zar stays alive, but down goes OG. Bobby on the left side still has the face versus Motep. He's outranged. Zar also colossal damage dealt to him, and here comes the supply drop around the left side. Big damage in on Motep, but he's invincible, it looks like. Kyo Dog falls, and it's all down to Motep to clutch up this round. Wow, I thought that again, AQM. We're gonna be able to turn things around, but Moitem in that 1v2, that's gonna be a difficult one. 
looking desperately for some connections to get that super, but it's not gonna happen. As CMN won't let it, and the first round this time around is going their side. VTZM once again at mid, ready to lay down some of that residue to slow things down, but he's gonna have to get into a good position for it. Here is the asteroid belt, or rather the uh, gadget from Colonel Ruffs, now blocking some things out. Residue already at mid as well. Great kill from Kyodog onto Bobby, brought down to a 3v2. Now OG's trying to keep things at range, and he's getting some pretty consistent damage versus Motep as well, but his main competition is gonna be Kyodog, who's laying down the law versus Zar, who has no sandbags and no protection left. 2v3 here for STMN. Still trying to turn this one around. Have two supers, but they want to use them too early. If the round is lost, they want to carry them over to the final round. And yeah, this uh, does not look very good here for STMN. As Zara is just hoping for the gas to spawn as quickly as possible. Does not want to feed any super. It's only going to be the Piper one carried over. So not the end of the world for STMN. Three supers now available on their side. This is their chance. A spawn clash. Just one round away from taking the second set already. Need the kills here. Here's the residue around on the right side. Zar still left high and dry without any sandbags to protect him. Luckily for him, he's not on the lane of Kyodog, but Kyodog's now rotating over to that mid lane. Bobby also kind of out in the open. One shot, not going to be enough to take him down. Rotates over to the left side. Zar, meanwhile, on the right, still could get pinched between Motep and Kyodog if he's not careful. Everyone's on such low. Oh, there's a kill on the Kyodog to start off, and here's the first peep as well. VTZM goes oh, down. Oh, oh, it's oh. up to Motep to clutch it up. 1v3 here. Gets one, actually. Maybe a chance, but no. Bobby refuses to let them take that set. And that means that now we are going to game three for knockout. Put AQM and STM in, put them in a blender, shake it up, and what do you get? A real scrappy match. And that is absolutely what we have expected. It's absolutely what we are seeing as well. One to one on set number two. AC Milan Clash is still just one game away from evening out the scoreline. Motep on the right side, faced versus Bobby, is going to be at a range advantage as well. Also with the left side broken oh. open. Oh, not going to work out so well for Zara. Kyodog with the jump back as well, but an eventual kill onto the guy from OG. Wow, what a big tag there onto Motep. Can they finish him off? And yeah, oh! final connection from Bobby and SCMN. One more round and they double down. Secure that second set. That would be absolutely massive for them. Off the bat, a peep heading their way. Kyodog, super low HP, but still alive. That's something he's going to be very grateful for. Unfortunate there for OG, though it takes a while to get that first super. Bobby also getting pinched between a lot of enemies. Oh, oh, what? Oh, oh, How oh, is he able to dodge this? He jumps out of range. Down he goes to Motep, and it's brought down to a 3v2. Eventually, they do find that connection onto Bobby, and this is not a good situation for STMN. Two supers available for AC Milan Clash. They will make sure they only use them if they need to. Want to carry them over to round number three, and that is going to be a great pickup from VTZM. Only OG left alive, and I mean, it's going to be the final round here that will decide who takes this knockout set. This one's chalked for AC Milan Clash in this round. OG is just focused on getting that next super. He's got to make sure he doesn't feed any to Kayo Dog. Motep is going to be left with a super. Same for VT Zim. And that's definitely a worthwhile asset to have. However, Zar still does have the treat around the left side. It's going to be making its way onto OG on the nanny. Big damage coming in. Almost a double slow, actually, as Zar was <laughs> nearly not able to get out of range of that attack on Bobby. Still, though, they've shaken it off, but they have lost a lot of ground in mid. Yeah, look how much space. That STMN have conceded the peep. Looking for VTZM, finds a connection. 300 HP, Zara is one shot, but he still lives. The super to relieve the pressure, but that rocket rain not gonna find much of a connection there. VTZM playing max range and playing carefully. As this is a very, very important round. A big connection from OG. VTZM is low. Motep going in. That is gonna be the first kill. Motep one shot. Can they find that final connection? They will. It's only Kyodog left alive in a one versus three, and Bobby takes him down 2-0 now in favor of STMN. Not a dominant set by any means there from STMN. However, this has been such an even match, especially coming off of the second set knockout. It never fails to deliver, but the Nanny doesn't seem to fail to deliver either. That game-winning kill as well, and we saw it in set number one, we saw it in set, set number two. I'm not gonna go ahead and say that we're not bound to see it in set number three because I've already been wrong once before.
I, I, I love what I'm seeing from both teams here. The, the, the strategy of opening up your side of the map, not something completely new, but uh, something that is very welcome to see. SCMN, they, they, they destroyed their wall, so they have more space to navigate, more space to, to juke and dodge uh, their opponent's shots. But I, I love the fact that AQM, they, they didn't care. They were still like taking those duels and, and taking those fights, trying to get those out mechanics and some great positioning as well. I think Motep had a fantastic game, as well as Kyodog on the Piper. But it, it was still not quite enough. Looking at the stats, I mean, DPS, they have, uh, kills wise, it's, it's incredibly uh, close. But SCMN just barely going to be taking this one. No doubt, and I mean, what a beautiful set there for Coyote Dog. Despite not taking the W overall, the homemade recipes one after the other to clutch up an entire round, though, was simply beautiful. And it looks like the Piper pick paid off in that specific matchup. The others, however, didn't seem to come through. And we saw, actually, the Nanny breaking open so many walls, as well as Brock making the same thing happen. And while it was a risk, it paid off for SDMN as well. It seems like they're very in tune with what risks they're willing to take and how exactly they might turn out. Yeah, one of the things I want to compliment as well about AQM has been their ability to, to trade. You know, how many times did we see an instant kill from STMN early in the round and somehow STMN and Clash are able to pull through, turn that back into a 2v2, keep it competitive. That's the reason it was so close because STMN, they were in the driver's seat, but STMN and Clash did a great job at adapting. Not quite good enough and this is going to be their final chance. They need to win three sets in a row here, otherwise they're their, their, their stay at the World Finals is going to be short-ended. With SCMN already having two set victories under their belt, they're simply one game away from already being at a match point. And we've seen a sweep earlier today, but it didn't go quite this fast. AQM, they got to bring down the momentum. However, Brawl Ball, that's not really one of those where you expect the momentum to crank down at all. If anything, though, historically, Brawl Ball has actually been SCMN's weakest game mode. They only have a 44% win rate on this mode. And when we head over to AQM, they have an 83% win their rate best on mode. Ball. It is their best mode. Yeah, that is their chance to start a comeback. It's going to be right here, right now, which is a good thing because it's their final chance. Gil, first pick on the side of Ace Man Clash as we see uh, an Otis immediately on the side of STMN as a response, just reading out the bands quickly as well. Search Barley and Squeak will be banned out by AQM STMN. They really don't want to see any B, any Ruffs, or any Penny. It's also very clear that AC Milan Clash, they don't want Gale to go over to the other side, more importantly, because, well, that can seriously ruin their plans of getting a tank pick on their side. It's definitely, oh no, and here is Buster, and we saw how that one worked out earlier. It is such a dominant pick. How do AC Milan Clash plan to respond to this? Because Zara, if he wants to push in, he can simply throw up that super, throw up that shield, and deny any possibility of Gale pushing him back. I like the confidence from SCMN. That is definitely going to be an interesting third set, Super Beach. Coming up soon as we are waiting for the fourth big second for AC Milan Clash. We'll get two in a row now to complete their comp. We'll be seeing a spike. All right, not the flashiest brawler. One of the most iconic of Brawl Stars, to be fair. Uh, it's an interesting one here. Not really, uh, you know, conjuring anyone per se, but it doesn't really get countered either. So it's going to be a bit more passive getting uh, some of that, 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 that damage from a far chip damage from the, the curveball. I assume they will run. Fertilizer is not something uh, you never see, but I, I would probably uh, expect, you know, the, the traditional curveball at this point. No doubt. Here comes a max as well, and that's going to be an attempt at sort of getting right up in Zara's face as well as putting a lot of pressure on Bobby. I don't really see how the max comps works out without just considering how Gale might operate as well. Gale gets right up in your face. If Zara doesn't have a super, that could be a bad situation. But so far, Buster, it's just looking incredibly convincing on the side of STMN. Otis is going to be able to slow down any kind of max pushes in as well if he has his super. Super denial is going to be probably the most important thing for Ace and Clash here. There's the, oh no, not the Pogo tank. Wow. What is going on? Wow. I mean, Team Kazo haven't even played yet, and STMN are bringing the cheese here as we are going to see. <laughs> Buster, Poco, do you think they're just going to walk forward towards that goal, get healed, have a shield down? I mean, I could see that happening. 
I would roughly estimate that that is a plan. If they also stay right on top of each other, they can passively charge Buster Super. Here they come, and no. For more of a lane situation, Zardo is going to be face versus Kyo Dog at mid, working at a similar range as well, but not quite the same speed. Mutual takedown, a little pass up to the left side where Bobby used to be. Could have been a goal off the beginning of the game, and it's very clear that that was a strategy that SD Man is going for. Now they need to hang back and regroup. Yeah, BTTM's positioning his board there. Gonna get pinched and taken out. Bobby might want to move that ball around. And he's gonna pass it indeed to OG. Zart, now in control, pushing forwards, but no big opportunities just yet for either side. Zart has his heal. That could be clutch if Bobby wants to go aggressive. Heal is gonna be popped indeed. Kayo Dog, quite low HP in the back line. So is Motep, a great super from Motep to slow things down. Nearly takes down Bobby as well. And I think he is rocking fertilizer indeed. Interesting decision here. Not my favorite, but at a pro level, they dodge curveball so well that sometimes it doesn't even matter. And sometimes it throws you a bit off your momentum, but here comes the momentum. A little speed there from Kyo Dog. He was right in the right position to intercept that ball. Lots oh. of damage coming in. Great pushback from VT Zim. This ball is locked in on the right side. Gale still remains alive, but Bobby's going for it. If he can take the damage from Motep, he'll be able to push it in. But there's another stun as well from VT Zim. Another super laid down by Motep. And this is looking like a successful defense for AC Blanc Clash. Spike, he's just one of the best defenders in this mode. He can throw fertilizer on the guy. He seems to stay alive way, way better. He even getting close to forever. Man, what uh, an attempt from SCMM, but it's like Clash, their, their defense is absolutely on point. I mean, it's what you expect when you're bringing a Gale to the table. Is there gonna be a stun here from BTZM? Yeah, indeed, gets some nice connection. No follow-up though, and Bobby knows that he's not gonna be stunned against any walls in that position. Just really good movement on his end to secure that elimination. Let's see if that is gonna be enough as SCMN, they're still trying to get that uh, th that big push we've been waiting for. There is going to be the solo screech to go for some damage. VT Zim with a stun on to Bobby, a follow-up heal from Ooh. Zar. Bobby claims a kill on VT Zim, a 3v2, a chance here for SCMN to close it out. But Bobby can't quite pick up the ball when he has his shield up. And for now, it seems more and more likely we're going to be heading towards overtime. Motep pinched around the left side. It's looking like a 3v2 favoring STMN, but still, VTZM refuses to budge. He has a super, he has a gadget as well. He needs to defend the ball. There's a pass up to mid, and the speed as well. This ball could get cornered. VTZM goes down, though. Zar barely stays alive. No, denial by Kyo Dog. He falls to the super from OG, and OG tries to get this ball. He's gonna have to do something tricky versus Motep, but instead, passes it over to mid to get some better positioning of this ball. VTZM is ready to play defense around it, and now some offense as he looks to push back any chances at a charge from STMN. Yeah, BTCM spawning with that super was huge, otherwise it's, that could just have been a walk-in. Kayodonk, incredibly low HP, needs to be careful. He gives a super from Motep to slow things down a little bit around the center of the map as VTCM is muted, ends up going down to OG on the right-hand side. This is a big opportunity for STMN to get to match point. Can AC Milan's, uh, AC Milan Clash's defense hold up? Still a 2v3 here, a nice kill from VT Zim. That spike super might just do the job. The super pass, OG, and he gets it in! What a goal from OG, the team synergy from STMN. And I mean, even the crowd can't believe it. That was so well calculated by STMN. And this is what set both scenes apart. Gameplay like we have never seen before. Leave it to SDMN to make it happen and bring us to match point. An incredibly close game, but AC Milan Clash have find themselves at the brink of defeat. They had a strong showing in the first game, but they have to split the narrative in order to stay in this competition. This is a chance here for SDMN to... Oh my god, what a team wipe. How do they make that happen? SDMN just shut down the entire roster of AC Milan Clash and now all they need to do is defend for two minutes, find another goal, you call it. But they are absolutely in the driver's seat here. AC Milan Clash, not the slightest room for mistakes here. They can still make it happen, though. They have Kyo Dog Speed, which can serve them amazing positioning. Motep has a super. There's a block around mid. Big stun on the Bobby Zars, the yeah. one defender yeah. left. A slot into the goal, and it's all tied up here. Exactly what Clash needed, but. They still need to be careful. A single goal from STMN, then it's all over for this year of the BSC for AC Man Clash. Speed bumped by Kyo Dog, a shield from Bobby as well to move forward. VTZM has a stun. If he can connect it, actually not quite gonna connect any stuns. Low HP 
on the right hand side, Kyodog falls, it's only BT Zim, oh! doesn't quite corner it! What a blunder! That's gonna cost them the match, SDMN take it home with one clean 3-0. It got messier in there, don't get me wrong, but that ending was just absolutely phenomenal. Telepathic control there towards the end, pass me the ball, and I'll end it very swiftly and painlessly here, says STMN. Surgical gameplay from the guys. The Buster came through in the end. The G's reign supreme, and AQM, no response on their side. A nearly perfect 3-0 sweep. Only one game going over to the side of AQM. Unfortunate showing here from AQM as well. They went out first round in the last World Finals to the World yeah, Champions. I mean, then the went out in, believe, in the, the first round in MSI. And once so again, go down in the first round to SDMN. And what a curse on that uh, roster of AC9 Clash. A to the third and international event where round exactly. one, they end up going home. I look at the nerves at the end, VTZM, he wanted to corner it up behind the twister, but he just kind of messed things up, and you can see from their reaction, that's, that's not what was planned SDM. out. What a showing, though, from SCMN, and even though it, it wasn't perfect, there, there were some very messy games, and some that AC Milan Clash, frankly, could have ended up taking. No doubt. SCMN, just, you know, just a little bit more on edge, just a little bit more sharp, and, and ready to play under so much pressure, because truly, they are absolute land demons, and they showed that again today. Not just land demons, but also just amazing drafters, as we can see, because if you can get away with the Buster and Poco, what is going on there? They, I said it, I said it, it's mind control at this point, and it all came to fruition there towards the end, the little pass out of the corner with what is one of the most solid defenses in the game, defense there by the Twister, just stellar gameplay by SDMN, and SDMN comes into this expecting a very close match. Three, two, either way. And they come away with a 3-0 with only one loss game-wise. That is domination. Yeah, it, it, what a crazy result here. We are going to be seeing our MVP, and it is going to be OG, actually. Wow, I, he had a phenomenal performance for off the bat, whether it was on the Nani uh, or, or, or later on. He really uh, popped off here. I, I think it was a team effort. Uh, to my eyes for, for SCMN, but he had a really good performance and it, it's good to see him in that position as well. He's not necessarily known as, you know, the mechanical beast that Zara and Bobby are, but he had a really strong series here and uh, we know as well how important he is to the roster just when it comes to, to morale and keeping that, that team synergy that we know SCMN for. Well, it looks like we predicted correctly STMN. They take the victory, and it looks like all the casters are correct in that regard. If you want to submit some predictions of your own, make sure you go on over to event.brawlstars.com, get some in-game rewards, interact with the stream, vote for your MVP, and also who you expect to win, and get some good old loot for it. It's always a fun time. With that, though, STMN, they're headed on to the quarterfinals, and AQM, unfortunately, are sent out of the competition early once again. We'll have to see how they answer next year, but for now, STMN, in, they reign supreme. Yeah, we thought this one was going to be a close one. We, we call it a close one. A lot of people at home, a lot of people here, the pro players, we're calling this one of the closer, uh, uh, you know, round of 16 matches. It really wasn't. They had their chances here in their AQM, but man, STML, they are looking good and some justice for Vatra that fell too early. Well, with that last game underway, or rather behind us, let's check out how the bracket has progressed. We still have one more match left for the day. The final one is gonna be Stalwart Esports versus Team Queso. Stalwart, the one qualifying team from their region, won every single monthly final in their region, and Team Queso across the way, they won the main monthly finals, but since then, there have been roster swaps, breakups, and a little bit of trouble as well. Yeah, it, it, it's a very interesting match here. Another one that could arguably be on paper, one of the closer ones of the round of 16. Maybe not necessarily for the best reasons. I think a lot of people expect and, and would rank Stalwart Esports and Team Kazo around the bottom uh, of, of the, the power rankings. We've seen all over social media talking to pro players, coaches, everyone here. 
But, you know, they come here with nothing to lose, a whole lot to prove, and we've seen in the past how dangerous that sort of combination can be. And this is a great match for that too, because, you know, one of them is going to win that first round, build a bit more confidence getting into the quarterfinals. And who knows what happens from there, because both teams have really solid players and a lot of potential, which I hope they truly show today. Well, let's talk about Stalwart Esports. We mentioned the one qualifying team from the region won every single monthly final and containing some recurring Worlds qualifying players. Response and Coop to Ace, they are back for yet another year in a row. Coop, it just seems like going to Worlds as a player is just another yearly occurrence for him. Yeah, it is something, uh, you know, that, that worries me a little bit on Stalwart's side, that they were maybe a bit too unchallenged this year, as they were last year. And we saw, you know, what happened afterwards, right? It was Worlds, MSI, just really not the sort of results that we expect from a team that dominates through their region. And uh, th that's going to be the, the big adaptation that comes with, with that challenge, is that you need to somehow just rise up that level furthermore and be you know used to competing against because when you're winning everything you're not competing as much as you are participating and right now that was their environment whereas team queso i mean they come from one of the most competitive regions with the most spots sure that's why they made it through uh, uh most likely as well but it, it's been battle after battle it's also been disappointment after disappointment i mean looking at the the snap dragon pro series uh season two zero and seven lost basically to every single major eu team and even some non-major eu teams so it, it's been a bit of a, a scary prospect on the side of Team Queso, but I, I think that's something that's really uh, here for both teams and them facing each other here. It's more of a blessing than anything else because it's very close to a 50-50 uh, on paper and they really need to build that confidence moving forward. And a lot at stake in this matchup as well. Let's remind everyone what exactly they are playing for. The prizing here, the grand prize, the world champion team, $400,000 for second place, $200,000 thousand dollars which is still a huge sum of money third and fourth place eighty thousand fifth through eighth thirty thousand and fifteen thousand for showing up to worlds right getting to the stage which is no easy feat yeah, yeah. i love their showing up to worlds as if you know it's open entrance yeah, no, yeah they have to qualify <laughs> For, 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 for to even be here in the first place. And uh, as we said, it was more of a struggle for Team Kezo. Stalwart kind of just breezed through, but we've seen in the past, you know, whether it was for mainland China or for uh, SCSA and ANZ, that being unchallenged more often than not tends to be a bit of a problem. Although, the exception, Navi last year, also, you know, a team that had just a flawless track record and yet popped off at World Stalwart. Uh, they are the only team that won seven out of seven monthly final this year, but is it more of a reflection of uh, maybe the, the lower level of the region or of their own, you know, domination? From talking to the pros, it seems to be more the first, and I'm cheering for Stalwart Esports to make their region proud and, and go, you know, past the, the first round again. There is a certain aspect of greatness that comes with being sort of an unknown enemy, right? And what we saw from Stalwart Esports when it came down to the final monthly final, they played some funny brawlers in that final matchup. And I think that that's quite indicative of just how far they are above the rest. And yeah. also it serves to conceal, while probably not intentional, to conceal what exactly they're going to be pulling out here at Worlds. And with Orca joining their team at the last minute, because unfortunately, a couple of, rather one of their players, Sergeant, was not able to arrive here. Orca, he's well known for pulling out some of the wacky stuff. At MSI, we saw him come out there with the Carl, and it didn't exactly work out. However, only about a month later, Carl was the central focus of the meta. And once, uh, once again, I think that really serves to justify and explain how these picks here, they could be pretty legendary and pretty inventive. Yeah, well, guys, before we get to this match, sorting out some technical difficulties, we are going to be going through some of the highlights of the day so far. And trust me, uh, you're going to be happy about it because there was so much exciting stuff. That was match number one here, Zeta Division 1 versus Chasmac. I think Chasmac played really well. They took a set from Zeta Division 1, which, I mean, very few teams have been able to successfully do in their entire careers. But Zeta, they're Zeta. And Shtetempo is Shtetempo and played exactly how you'd expect. 
Yeah, Shit Tapo really one of the focuses here. I mean, look at this last minute finish from Zeta Division 1. They were so close to getting that back, to getting all of those gems back, and of course went ahead into Bridge Too Far to seriously close games. Honestly, I think we saw Chazmag at the top of their form. Vatra Gaming, I will say, I'm proud of my region. I really thought that Vatra Gaming could take this win, but reply to them, they're simply diff, right? Joker, look, 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 Maru, at this, look at this, Mari, 1v trees, wins the game, <laughs> wins the set. I mean, how do you not love Reply Totem? I mean, Totem, they're simply so, so good. And there was a period as well when it came to uh, consistent domination over the region. One first place after the other. The only sets conceded being to teams such as SK Gaming, such as Tribe Gaming EU, absolute powerhouses in the region. But even what we saw at Gamescom, at the SPS EU finals, they handily took down SK Gaming. Such a supreme display of skill from this new roster. As soon as they got Joker on the roster, it seemed like instant excellence. Well, you know, we have seen the highlights, we've seen what happened. Let's again check out the bracket just to keep you guys updated. It was Zeta Division 1 that won 3-1 against Chasma Gaming EU. Reply Totem with the sweep against Vatra. Vatra honestly kind of deserved a set in my opinion. Uh, they, they had some closer games here and there, but Totem, uh, they showed up exactly how we'd expect them to. At least I did, because I predicted them to <laughs> win the rest of the casting desk. Had more doubts, I guess, but I mean, should have just picked better predictions ready. And Stonewood Esports versus Team Queso, that is where we are heading next. I think I skipped over STMN's trio victory against AC Milan Clash. If you guys are still here right now, you probably witnessed that just a couple of minutes ago. That was quite a performance from STMN. I think nerves were a bit too much uh, on the side of AC Milan Clash, to, to, a bit too much to deal with. And, and it's kind of choked towards him. Yeah, and it's not even to say that they had any like really, really bad games in there. There were moments where it was incredibly convincing, especially when we went into knockout as well. It seemed like they were probably going to take a victory over STMN and halt that momentum. Unfortunate. And then we went into Brawl Ball, which is their most consistent mode. We mentioned 83% win rate, and it was STMN's worst mode. This is simply STMN at the top of their form. Yeah, th th this is one of the things I love the most about competitions like these, right? Because uh, we have the stats, we have you know a lot of information, we prepare so much to, to cast or even just watch those matches because we've been following those teams throughout the entire year and maybe even the years before for uh, quite a lot of us. But, you know, it turns out that in person and with very different environments than what you are used to and different teams you're used to facing, uh, everything gets just torn apart and, and changed in, in, in a great way as STMN. I mean, they, as you said, won their weakest mode against AQM's strongest mode and they did so convincingly as well with a creative draft and that's the sort of approach I love so far. This first day of the World Finals has been just Absolutely phenomenal. With SCMIT headed in the competition, we can continue to expect to see some of those creative picks as well, but I think there is one team in particular where they are extremely characteristic of these particular crazy picks. I can't wait to see them. Let's check out Stalwart Esports. And on pas sur la scène parce qu'on est au milieu de tout le monde. Est-ce qu'on est chaud pour le dernier match? Ah, on est tous là, il y a beaucoup de bruit, tout le monde est très chaud, il nous reste un match pour aujourd'hui. La première équipe à accueillir, c'est la seule équipe qui est invaincue de la saison régulière sur toutes les finales. Ils ont gagné toutes les finales mensuelles qu'ils ont fait. Ils ont le seul vétéran qui a fait les quatre finales mondiales sur Volstar. Un box de bruit pour Stalwart Esports Amazing, amazing players and really some world-renowned players as well. Some former world finalists in here. Response, Coop to Ace and Orca joining up at the last minute to replace Sargent. Yeah, I mean, so much history behind this roster, right? Coop to Ace played every single uh, world final. Uh, since 2019, he's been a part of the scene. Even won one in 2020 with Response that is still on the roster as well. Response that, if my memory serves me correctly, was the MVP of the World Finals 2020. And as you mentioned, Orca joining up the ranks is uh, one of the most exciting things about this roster because we know how much he's had to do with the current meta and how teams view the game at the moment. And he's looking to show that again here in their first match of the World Finals and make sure it's not their last. 
no doubt at all. But of course, they have a pretty intimidating opponent across the way. Team Queso, they're looking so formidable today. Et leur adversaire, ils nous viennent d'Europe, c'est l'équipe qui représente l'Espagne. Trois joueurs espagnols qui sont à la recherche d'un titre ce week-end. Ahora es tiempo para España, Team Queso Avi, Ali, SSJ and Boss. All three players, compared to that other team, Stalwart, they're all new to the World Finals. So that is going to be a very fresh experience. Boss just missed out as he got, you know, out of the roster last year with Bunker uh, just last minute. This is their chance to shine on the big stage. They've had their troubles this year. They are fourth seed of EMEA, have had all kinds of things happening. Some big roster changes not that long ago. Rafa and Blacksy leaving the roster. Boss joining in instead. One monthly final win as well, right in the mid part of the year. Uh, they, they, they are quite uh, an interesting team because I feel like their potential is huge. They have the mechanics and they're very clever guys, but they've been incredibly inconsistent. And lately, they've been more consistent, but consistently struggling. And that is not the best look getting into the World Finals. They're coming here with a whole lot to prove to the world. No doubt. And I mean, if we talk specifically the consistency of the struggle for this team, I think it's really just growing pains with the new addition of Boss and a loss of a couple of members on their team being dropped from the team as well. We've seen them when it came to the challenge season for the second season of SPS. Unfortunately, going 0-7 on that record, even going down to a couple of the former teammates on that roster, they are coming in here with really not much to lose because it has been a bit of a stumble at the end of the season for them. However, they're competing in an extremely storied and extremely competitive region, unlike Stalwart Esports. They're consistently dominant, Stalwart Esports that is. Team Queso consistently in that top eight in their region, but not able really to stand up to the other titans of their region. Yeah, I, 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 I'm fully with you ready. And I, I think the fact that Team Queso had so much struggle, the great thing about Worlds is if they pop off now, we can forget about all that. No one's gonna remember, oh, yeah. you know, the zero seven, 7 the struggles, all the memes. We will remember that they popped off now, so this is a big opportunity to turn that legacy around and, you know, finish the year with pride, which so far they've been themselves disappointed with how things have gone. It's looking like hot potato is gonna be, a uh, pit stop rather, is gonna be where we start things off. What an interesting map to, to come back here. 69% of you guys at home are gonna be cheering or rather predicting uh, Team Keizo to take this one home. I think it's closer than that. Uh, my prediction would also uh, go with Team Keizo. I think, Reddy, you also went Team Keizo, right? Absolutely, and I think it's kind of 50-50 here in terms of the uh, sort of uh, odds of either team winning. We'll see the first pick head over the way of Stalwart Esports, however. Coop to Ace with that Carl first pick, and let's also break down some of the bands as well. Otis, Buzz, and Surge, banned on the side of Stalwart Esports, on the side of Team Queso. Brock, Otis, and Stu eliminated from the question. However, there are other wall breakers that you can go for here, and with the last pick, Team Queso could be pretty dominant with the throwers such as Barley, which is pretty common on this map. Another brawler to look out for that kind of comes out of nowhere sometimes is Nita. That is a possibility, not one I'm expecting to see, to be fair. We are going to see a Bunny and a Rico for Team Queso, which I think are, are pretty good picks. I'm not necessarily the, the most fond of Bonnie on this map. I think the, the more, you know, close out nature makes it a bit more difficult to pop off. But if you can get a jump in on the safe and there's no one really defending it, that's a whole ton of damage that you can deal in, in a short amount of time and, and really disrupt the defense from Stalwart as well. So I like that a lot. What I love is Rico. I think it is such a good brawler still, whether it's Bouncy Castle giving you that insane survivability or just you know it's core mechanics those bounces incredibly deadly and okay, okay i take it back i take it back we are gonna see anita in the the tarot as well was the previous pick and that is one interesting call from soul <laughs> Definitely one of my favorite brawlers to see and also play here on Pit Stop. It seems like the landscape can lend itself to her sometimes, but she's really going to be good into tanks. You know what I'm not seeing on the side of Team Queso? Yeah, I'm not really seeing any tanks. If anything, Nita could get some damage off of Ala SSJ, but at the end of the day, 
I think this is just going to be one of those wacky kind of out of nowhere picks from Stalwart Esports that we came in expecting. A Gale final pick, it's going to serve to be fairly good versus Carl and Daryl and might even hardwall them if they're not careful. Yeah, listen, Ready. I've been studying Brawl Stars comps for the last two years, and I don't see how Star Wars Esports make this work, <laughs> but I, I'm here to learn too, and I want them to prove me wrong. Let's see how this one goes for our final match of day one. Javi on the left side, already faced up versus Orca, who is going to be pretty much hard countered by this Brawler. LSSJ already getting some easy damage around the right side response, going in with the gadget as well. Boss, he's ready with his super, and Goop to Ace and leaves him behind. Here it comes. Boss getting some great damage in, and not a scratch on Team Queso's save yet, and only 30 seconds in the game. <laughs> Look how long Boss stays alive, LSSJ with some massive damage. Super connects onto the safe as well, and so far it's a stop and a half here in favor of Team Keizo taking that save all the way down to 24% now, and they still got that aggressive positioning going for them. As oh, no. that safe, I don't think it's gonna survive. Ready? Yeah, Stored Esports, they close it out just like that. Rather, Team Keizo, I mean, I, I told you, I don't, I don't see what. You know, they try to achieve with that combo. I think the Gil pick as well is kind of the nail in the coffin here because it's facing uh, both a Carl and a Daryl, and it counters the hell out of them. In my defense, okay, in my defense, this is not where I expected Nina to be played, right? She's gonna be good into tanks. And once again, I don't see any tanks on the opposing team at all. Coop to Ace is gonna be tasked with playing this Brawler as well. He might be able to get some stuff on versus bots. Al SSJ also is gonna be getting great damage with the use of his star power to get some additional damage. And Coop to Ace also looking for something, also hiding behind that safe as he attempts to charge up a super. Good kill there. And Al SSJ and Boss are left alone. But meanwhile, on the enemy safe, it's almost a takedown, 3% remain. Yeah, they went for a base race, and Javi does manage to deal with Orca, so that is maybe gonna save it, but oh! never mind. Oh, the SSJ, the super pierces through, gets straight to the safe, and that is gonna be an incredibly quick first set for Team Queso. Try this one on for size. Yeah, try and block the piercing shot that I get with my super. How does that sound? Brilliant answer there from uh, Team K. So, and uh, you know what? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't see much from the Nita this time. I'm not gonna lie, but get used to it because this is what Stalwart like to do. They well, like to come out of absolute nowhere with some of the wacky picks. We will have seen about a minute of playtime of uh, <laughs> Nita at the World Finals. So, there you go, Nita fans. Uh, don't think they'll be satisfied. That second game was closer. I think it was maybe a bit more of a problem on Team Kazo's side to go for that base race because, I mean, let's be honest, Daryl deals an awful lot of damage on safe and uh, so does Carl, to be fair, especially if he can get the right positioning. It can be quite a problem. In the end, it's still in control for Team Kazo. Kills-wise, night and day difference. Mostly gonna be due to that first game where they had an insane amount of kills. The second, not really because it was a base race. But still, it is going to be a set for Team Keizo, one that, in my own, honest opinion, like that draft from Sword Esports, I like that they went for something different because they know that they are probably slight underdogs in this one, but their drafts have to be more solid moving forward. I mean, I always like to see something refreshing, but sometimes it refreshes my memory of what you don't really do in Brawl Stars, and that is just one of those situations. Of course, we're casters, right? We don't get to talk about the draft here. We'll have to see what they come up with in the next set as well. Will Stalwart once again go out on a limb and try something wacky? It worked kind of miserably for this time. It didn't even work even a little bit. And for Team Queso, they're just running the same old, same old and doing great. I wonder if we'll see that return to normalcy from Stalwart. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. It, it just... I, I don't know if it's just different metas between regions and, and Stalwart Esports just doesn't quite seem to fit in, in this particular uh, uh, first set. But it, it was just not it. I mean, I, I, I was excited because it's just super original, fun approach, but it was just really not functional. And you gotta find kind of the sweet spot, right? Between something that catches your opponents off guard, because you don't always need the best strategy to win. If you catch your opponent off guard and they're just not expecting uh, you to play certain brawlers or certain comms and also just not trained to face them because they haven't scrimmed them nearly as much because they're somewhat off meta picks, it can be an absolutely viable option. But let's see as we move to Gold, our gold Arm Gulch. Stalwart Esports going a bit more traditional here with the opening pick of Piper. 
Let's break down the bans as well. Eve ban on the side of Stalwart Esports, actually. There's the Brock and Nanny to complement it. And Team Queso getting rid of Bonnie, Janet, and Gus. More consistent, more normal stuff on the side of Team Queso. I wonder where Eve really falls into the equation on the side of Stalwart Esports. But now that she has that reload gear, she's definitely a lot more popular. But Ala SSJ, once those walls broken open, he is going to struggle. So it's going to be an objective for Team Queso to end things quickly. And they're going to do so with Max. Yeah, no better brawler to define the pacing of the game game as Max that can just speed things up, not only herself, but her teammates with her. I, I, I do like what I'm seeing here from uh, Team Queso. I, I, I think that, I mean, obviously Tick is in an amazing place with his new gear, uh, but Max is still really solid as well. I don't think those are bad answers from Solid Esports. A bit more traditional here. Otis has been in a very good place pretty much ever since its release or a couple days after where the pros started really picking up up. But Bo, also oh. a brawler that, especially if you're maybe a bit nervous or not quite feeling your mechanics, can really help get some con consistent damage out with end the mines and can give you straight up free rounds. And Teddy, what I'm seeing here is two wall breakers on the side of Stalwart Esports and two throwers on the side of Team Queso. This is a big risk that Team Queso willingly took picking up two throwers. They must seem to think that they can play this very, very safe and not give any supers to Orca or Coop to Ace if they play this right. But still, we could see the super totem go down from Coop to Ace. It can take a little damage for him and it can also help him charge up that super for free. He might do so on the left side of the map. On the right side of the map though, Ala SSJ and Javi are setting up in the respective matchups. Boss trying to make it happen at mid, but he's severely outrange. He has to get good dodges if he plans on taking on Orca. Yeah, you mentioned wall breakers, and, and I agree, but it's not really free wall breaks, right? No. Piper Super is quite hard to get and to destroy the walls you want to destroy, especially when they're, you know, on, on the enemy side of the map. And uh, Bo's mines, they are great, but he can't really decide when he's going to blow them up, and, and that means that Team Kazo, they can kind of try to walk around them or, uh, you know, just... Uh, play more in other areas of the map. Let's see, uh, so far it's very much just a max range game. A nice stack from Javi onto response, but nothing too substantial just yet. Orca gets a super and he's gonna open up a couple of walls, doesn't wanna get pinched in their side of the map. That's gonna help with that, give them a bit more space as well to dodge those from shots. Final push coming in now though, as boss is low HP. It's only Ali SSG left alive, but a tick head that will be taken care of quite easily. That should not be winnable. Response is low. It is gonna be dealt with by Stalwart Esports. And finally, something going their way as they take round one. And Mines set down over on the right side. Looks like they're going to throw that down and hope that Team Queso are not aware of the positioning, which they probably won't be. Javi also making his way towards the bottom of the arena, being careful around that area. Maybe he knows that the Mines are there. A Super 4 by Orca? Yeah, that cannot have been on purpose. Unfortunate there. And here comes the Super from Javi as well. Nothing dealt on response, but it's still a 2v3. Yeah, a great opening here from Team Queso in the second round. Those mines, I'm guessing that they are aware of it on the side of Team Queso. Sure, they were placed before they could see them, but they could probably... Oh no, boss! Nearly gets caught off guard. It's, I mean, the best case scenario that it's the Max that clears them because that phase shifter just saved his life and kept them the man advantage. Javi still on the right side also trying to get those last shots into Coop to Ace, almost landing one shot, two shot, no, no shot. Ala SSJ though throwing the Tick Super on the back left, looks like Response doesn't know where it is. Already gonna make contact on Coop to Ace, is left all alone in the round this time. Goes to Team Queso, they also have a couple of Supers that they can work with. Boss has his speed, Javi has his Super as well to finish off the kill. Let's see if Javi is gonna try to catch someone off guard with a ground bomb so far. Coop just sitting on his totem. It's going to get cleared out quite easily by the tick. And a bit more aggression here as boss is low HP, needs to be careful, is able to get out of air. Not anything really picked up early on as the tick head is going to be heading downwards. Will be dealt with quite easy, but the positioning is just so poor on the side of Stalwart. Response gets isolated and picked up. On the left side, it's only Orca left alive now as Coupe Ace falls too, and this should not be winnable whatsoever here for Stalwart as Team Queso. That's three games in a row now and threatening Stalwart to take a second set. And a comp also that's a little bit 
different from what we would usually see. Two throwers doubling down on that is quite rare, and we didn't really see that much of a response to the tick pick either. Not a whole lot of immediate wall break to be offered there, and unfortunately, that came back to bite Stalwart Esports. We saw some moments when it came down to that first round that they're capable of making a win happen here. However, Team Queso, they just have the positioning, the max is working wonders for them. Let's see if Stalwart Esports can prevent Team Queso from taking a second set. This is going to be their chance here. So far, a nice stack from Orca. Follow up homemade recipe, and that is going to force out a face shifter from Boss. Trying to get some of that utility out of the mix as LASS Jake gets stacked up, needs to fall back, but heals so quickly as a tick that it barely even matters. Just that supercharge that is nice for Stalwart. So far, not a single super available on either side. Boss has this super, though. He can use it to get some speed going, possibly as some funky action going on here as well. Orca at mid is still trying to hit Boss, but Boss is staying just out of reach. Here comes the speed, though. Ala SSJ in with a tick super to the backside. Good days. Oh, 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 my <laughs> god! The aggro tick is going to pay off, and it's a team wipe off of the speed. Man, I just love the aggression <laughs> from Ali SSJ. The sped up tick with the last hurrah, just going in kamikaze style and securing that elimination for Team Queso. Now, just a round away from claiming yet another set. Gupta Ace gonna throw down the super totem on the back left. He and Response are both gonna get their super. Some more wall break action for Orca, but Ala SSJ, he knows that he just needs to fall back a little bit more. He's even able to get a tick super out of this one as well. Boss has the speed, a little denial around the left side, some wall break coming in too, but still Ala SSJ has a little bit to work with. Just one mine remaining on the left side. Meanwhile, Javi continues to keep things back. Really, both teams just kind of playing things out until the poison forces him to close in, which is when we might see yet another play from the max speed and the tick gadget. Two supers available for Team Queso. Only the mute for response. Let's see if there's a chance here. Speed is caught by Boss. A tick head pushing Orca as well. Nearly gets the connection, actually. Boss very low. Which he is actually going to tank for his teammate. Javi is low as well. And everyone is on Star Wars size. But it's only Ale SSJ left alive. And he's going to give it to them. Keep that tick head for the third and final round. Let's see if Stalwart Esports tie things up in this second set or if Team Queso take another. Oh, big damage onto Orca. Yeah, shooting at someone that's not in those bushes. Did not expect to see the Tick Super, or rather not see the Tick Super coming down that left bush. Some damage still offered around the right side from Mojave, just keeping things controlled around mid, but Boss needs his Super, and he needs it pretty soon here. Have to be prepared for that poison when it closes in. Ala SSJ also looking for his next Super. Big damage in. Javi almost gets a kill combo, but response is just out of reach. Boss, here's the speed, and they might go for something that didn't work out so well at the end of the last round. Hopefully it works out for them this time. Yeah, Tick Head available again, and we've seen how much damage that can do. So tanky nowadays as well with the Mythic gear. But things slow down a little bit. Map is very opened up, but there's still enough walls for Team Kezo to play defensively on the right-hand side, and that's a great wall break from Orca, but Response is going to find a kill on Ali SSG. It's oh. a 2v1, 1v1, now Response versus Harvey. Who's going to take it as Response is trying to find that connection to Harvey? Not much of a chance as a thrower. That is going to be a game for Storward in the end. Great dodges there towards the end, but it simply is not enough. And that's the hazard of running two throwers. Your shots can be dodged out pretty effectively when it comes to those close range interactions. And especially once all the walls have been broken down as well. Stalwart Esports, it looks like they found the trick to making this work. They play the long game, they drag it out as much as they can because the benefit of Team Queso is they play very well in the early game with these brawlers and they can get things going really, really fast with the max speed once they have it available. Yeah, the question now is, Team Kezo going to let them break those walls again because it's not that easy for Stalwart to get in that position. If Team Kezo are careful, especially with the, the, the throwers, they can try to keep them away. Just need to not feed too many supers and not give too much map control away. As Coupe Ace is deep on the top left, not really doing all that much, just trying to maybe catch someone off guard that wanders around, not really providing the most assistance to his teammates just yet. Does get tagged up just 
a little bit, but now we do have two supers available for Team KZ, none on the side of Stalwart. Response still trying to offer some damage here versus Javi. Might end up getting tapped up. Great dodges, but LSSJ does fall. Response still taking serious damage. Blocked in on the right side. Down he goes. Coop to Ace has to stay alive. Good dodge of the super as well. Could throw down the mines. Chooses not to. Down he goes. And Team Queso take this first round of this game. Team Queso in the driver's seat again. But Stalwart Esports, they are hungry to take this set. Let's see as the totem gets Rather quickly dealt with a bit of a panic last hurrah here. The final one from uh, Ali SSJ. We saw earlier how useful that can be, and wasting one is definitely not great, but got to stay alive at all costs as the max movement speed might get popped soon by Boss. Still in a 3v3 here, and high tension on the side of Stalwart Esports. They don't want to give another set away. Ala SSJ continues working for that super. Meanwhile, on the top side, Boss, he has his super ready. He's getting a 1v2, but he's keeping good distance, taking a little bit of damage at times. Response also has the super ready to deny max speed if it arrives. Boss is going to dodge it out, though. Unfortunate there for Response. Fat Splatter coming in to continue to push things back. Coop to Ace still tries to get some damage in, but no. Here's the speed. Javi sped forward. Same for Boss. Big damage. Dodges away with only 90 health left. Meanwhile, down goes Ala SSJ. Grom Bomb comes in. No connections. It's just Boss, and it does doesn't come through. It's all tied up in this last game of the set. Stalwart Esports pushing it all the way here for this knockout set. And Team Queso, they don't want any of that. They want that clean 2-0. They want that momentum on their side. Response has a mute available if anyone gets too close or a bit careless. It's a great way to punish your opponents, especially in the late stages of those rounds. As Coupe Diaz overextends a little bit, it's going to feed a super to Ali SSJ. So far, no big openings on either side as they're setting themselves up for this final battle of knockout. Two supers now for the side of Team Kezo. Face shifter there to stay up from boss. This is going to be a messy final fight. It feels like it at least. Boss has a speed and ready to go at a moment's notice. Al SSJ has his gadget ready to tank some damage and also a super which can tank a whole lot of damage and has a whole lot of health. They need to bait the shots out of an enemy first. Here comes the speed. Al SSJ down goes the tick super and lots of damage coming in. Coop to Ace might go down. Oh. Tick super alive. Down he goes. Al SSJ has another one. It's going down. Got to get out of the way of the tick mines. Well done by Team Queso as Orca falls and Team Queso takes set number two. Wow, that was still close. Still very, very close, but it's now two sets to zero as Team Kezo are starting to make themselves a bit more comfortable. It, it, it's crazy, though, the change of pace, right? That first set was incredibly fast. It was like a, a two-minute set, and then we move on here to knockout, and it goes all the way to the final game, the final round of the final game, as a matter of fact, and it really was hard to tell who would take it. Team Kezo prevail, and now they're going to be moving forward to set number three with just quite a bit more momentum and confidence as Stalwart Esports, despite having two world champion players from 2020, they seem to be stumbling so far. Far from the ideal outcome for Stalwart Esports here is they were really planning on coming into this one and giving it a good show, but the first set, it wasn't terribly convincing in terms of the draft. And I will say, I will give my two cents here, I wasn't too convinced by the draft there from Team Queso, but it ended up working out in the end. I think also that this was pretty reactionary gameplay from Stalwart Esports. What we saw in terms of the pace of the game, slowing down a lot, because they knew that they needed to break down the walls in order to make this one happen. Response with eight kills right here. That's what happens when you have an MVP of the World Finals on your team, but it's simply not not enough, it's got to be a team effort. Yeah, exactly that. Team K so much more evenly spread out, right? 6-5-5, five, five, just Javi barely standing out, but it was more, yeah, that team effort, right? Playing together and the team synergy. I did like their ideas, though, you know? There wasn't that much, like, you know, easy wall-breaking abilities on, on, on the enemy side, so doubling down on the throwers just gives them a little bit more opportunities. It's an interesting approach, one that will ever so barely work out for that set. But we are, are moving to set three here. And already so many picks coming true. We saw the Eve first pick from Stalwart Esports, stealing it away from Team Kezo, who, who we know love the Eve, especially now with Reload Gear. A very, very strong option on Canal Grande. We'll see Penny and Squeak picked up by Team Kezo. Looking at the bands really quickly as well. 
Well, oh. maybe in a bit, as Ash is going to be brought to the table by Stalwart Esports. I know what you want to say. I know what you want to say, so I'll just do it for you. NA, nice. bro, NA. Yeah, NA vibes out here with the pick of Ash. And you know what? I, I'm from NA, and I also strongly believe in this one. It is so impossible to get out of the bushes once it gets in there. And for Team Queso, the play has to be, let's eliminate the bushes. But what really are their options here in terms of wall breakers? They've gotten rid of Brock already, and Surge is going to be one of the best counters maybe to tanks just in general. Versus Ash, not really consideration, not really consideration overall as it has okay. been. A buster response. This is brilliant. I'm loving the draft, but it is the wacky drafts in full force. Yeah, both teams really going at it here. And I, I'm going to say right now, I do prefer Star Wars Esports' draft just a little yeah. bit. I, I'm just not too sure how Buster is going to be interacting with that Ash, assuming that, you know, it's probably the, the most viable way to deal with him here uh, out of every brawler that Team Kayser brought to the table. A lot of question marks, uh, marks rather, for this third set, but let's find out as Coupe the Ace has easy access to that blue star, doesn't have to walk by the sides as the water is not a problem for him. Looks like free mid, maybe, for Team Queso as they are getting some great kills over here. Boss gets the elimination on the right side, but no, down it goes. Javi on the left side. Response taking major damage. Boss with some good stuff in on Coupe de Ace. Oh, oh my oh, god! Oh. The reflection with the super from Boss. Very well played and a takedown onto Orca, but the scoreline, it's so, so even. Response is still looking for a killer. He needs to land on Alice SJ. There it is, and he flies away with five stars to his name in the blue star, safely secured. Response is popping off exactly when Stalwart needed him to. Orca might go down here, and oh. yeah, indeed, Coop D8, some friendly fire here as the shots <laughs> bounce off Buster's shield and straight into Orca's face. Well, it looks like Orca's shaking it off too with the pin thrown up in the air, but it's not a great look there. Stalwart Esports, they still are in the lead, but backed all the way up, they're going to be struggling quite a bit. That said, Team Queso, they're at the deficit. They have to play aggro. And Stalwart Esports, their comp is going to lend itself towards strong defensive play. If Javi starts to push the turret up, though, they're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, Orca goes down. Big pinch there. Beautiful play from Team Queso. Only the blue star setting both teams apart right now. And the push is coming true from Team Queso. Coupe de Ace has slowed everyone. Seems oh, no. to be slowed on the side of Stalwart. And there is that kill they needed. Response falls. And with 25 seconds left, it's now Stalwart that needs to go on the offense. Some hatchlings coming in, quickly dispelled by both Alice SJ and Boss. There's just no chance, it looks like, of Stalwart pushing in versus Team Queso. They're going to need to do the impossible response. Gets so much damage. Alice SJ needs to be tapped up one more time. Coop to Ace also has to chime in here. Good heals from Boss. A takedown as well. Response gets the kill, but it's not enough to bring this one back for them. And Team Queso head on to a match point. Match point now for Team Queso and their chance to close it out. And I wouldn't quite call it a clean sweep. <laughs> uh, but, but a fairly clean one here. A trio is on the menu, but Star Wars, they've shown that their comp is competitive here. They can make it war, just need to iron out a couple more mistakes. This is their final chance and perhaps their final moments at the World Finals 2022. Orca, once again, trying to dip this on the right side versus Boss. Boss has a heal at the ready. Orca mutually assured destruction on the right side, but a great kill on the left side versus Javi is going to secure his two-star lead for Stalwart Esports, but no answer on the right side. Boss is just going to be allowed to walk in, actually. Thankfully, Orca is here in time to try and do something, but the super is quickly dispelled by the piercing damage that Buster has to offer. Javi also continues to get his way inside of the left side. There is also the oh. turret coming down. Oh my gosh! Did you see? Oh, I thought that, that was going to be the kill on Duali SSJ. Barely survives, never mind. But two stars still in favor of Stalwart. Not a big, big lead here as Boss tries to catch Coop off guard. Not going to work hard. Coop finds Javi instead. Ali falls to Orca. Three stars now as Boss desperately wants to keep Orca from getting away, but also doesn't want to go down himself. Eventually decides to play it safe here. Maybe a shield might be popped as Orca is low. He goes down. Blue star again. That's all that separates both teams, but it's still on the side of Stalwart Esports for now. Response still tries to push it on the right side, does get some good chip shots versus Boss. Uh, almost great dodges there as well for Orca. Great kill on the right side for Boss too. Orca has to respond somehow. Stalwart Esports are now down by two stars, only 30 seconds left on the clock, and once again, they find themselves not in possession of mid and with not much time to bring things back in terms of the stars. Yeah, two stars, it's all it takes, but 
It's also all it takes for Stalwart Esports to go home. With about 15 seconds left, this is going to be the final chance for Stalwart to turn things around. A kill on both sides. It's 5 now in favor of Team K. So Orca pushing boss, but oh, the shield. Oh. That's a clutch one to pop as response is trying to reset the heal, make some magic happen. Might just do it, but no. No time left. It's close. Low HP across the board on the side of Team Queso, but they are going to be your winners for this fourth round of 16 match. Moving forward to the quarterfinals on Sunday, and sadly, Stalwart will be going home. Not quite empty-handed, but definitely not with what they wanted. Yeah, just one game victory in there for them, which is certainly not what they came here hoping for. Unfortunate for them, but it's a level playing field. They're all playing the same game of Brawl Stars, and if you choose to go for something creative, then don't be so surprised if it ends up not working out, unfortunately, for Stalwart. However, very well played on both sides. Really peak Brawl Stars gameplay here. And it all leads up to the quarterfinals that are going to be taking place in just a couple of days here with our first four quarterfinalists locked in. Yeah, we have all four already. We have all four, but I mean, uh, just going through some of what we witnessed here between Stalwart Esports and Team Keizo, we had so many interesting ideas. And look how close the end was here. The, the, the final push, we'll see that in just a little bit for sure. But there was really not all that much in it at the end. Uh, sure, yes, I mean, Team Keizo won a lot more games, were a lot more convincing, but uh, just look at the star difference. There, there's about, like, what, what was it, six, seven? And there's nine stars on two low HP players that were uh, uh, just a tickle away from going down. And here we have our final stats here for set number three, boss popping off eight kills, 316. DPS as well, clearly standing out for this final set. Yeah, I mean, just what a great showing here, and especially in Bounty, where those kills are certainly difficult to get, but sometimes the Buster just seems to pull through, and I'm, it's, it's, it's such a strong brawler that seems to have been dominating so far today. I wonder if this one's gonna appear in the next set of, of round of 16 matches, maybe even in the quarterfinals, but it has been incredibly dominant for Team Queso, and once again, unfortunate for Stalwart Esports. Yeah, I mean, that is the tough reality of the Brawl Stars World Finals. You lose, you go home, you're an entire year worth of work. But let's see who our MVP is going to be for this matchup. It is Boss. He barely missed out on the World Finals last year, and he kicks off his first match in the World Finals 2022 with an MVP. I mean, isn't that beautiful? He, I mean, he's here to show that he is World Finals material and then goes the extra mile, claiming MVP in the process and so many kills across every single one of those games. One of the, well, the latest addition to this roster as well, giving it some new life, maybe when it comes to the world stage as well. And certainly impressive and certainly something to be proud of as they progress along in the bracket. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they played fantastically on the side of Team K. So uh, I, I think a, a sweep as well might just give them the confidence they need to, you know, go into their quarterfinals match with just just a little bit more confidence and, and, and uh, the feeling that they can make it work. We'll see, yes, this was arguably one of the weaker levels uh, round of 16 matches, but there needs to be a winner, there needs to be a loser, and Team Keizo are moving up in the bracket. Well, speaking of that bracket, let's move along and recap what has happened over the course of the day. First, a 3-1 victory for Zeta Division 1 over Chazmat Gaming EU. Then a 3-0 sweep for Reply Totem versus Vatra Gaming. Then third, AC Belong Clash going against STMN, going down eliminated from the competition as STMN moves forward. And the same for Stalwart Esports and Team Queso, with Team Queso locking in their spot in the quarterfinals. Yeah, I mean, Overall, a lot of what we expect, <laughs> a lot of what I expected, let's be honest here already, uh, but but uh, we also had some pleasant surprises, you know. I, I think Chasmac played phenomenally in their opening match. Let's look at the predictions. I mean, you guys got most of it correct. Most of it, I, 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 I guess. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, it, it was tight. There were some more clear-cut matches. To be fair, none of them really going to set five today, which has been a little bit of a disappointment, but it does mean that that is going to be on the menu for either tomorrow or Sunday. Surely we'll get some incredibly tough and close matches. I can't wait for it. 
Well, looking forward, let's see what matches are coming up tomorrow. It is the bottom bracket. Our next four matches to determine who our quarterfinalists are going to be. Tribe Gaming EU faces off versus Zest. Then, Zeta Division Zero versus Chazmat Gaming BR. Then, Tribe Gaming NA versus Navi. And finally, Reconic Esports TOC versus SK Gaming. Certainly an entertaining bracket that you won't want to miss. Yeah, there are some insane matches in there. I mean, particularly, I'm looking at Tribe Gaming and A versus Na'Vi. That is just such a stacked uh, round of 16 match. One of the most stacked ones. So looking forward to that one in particular, because I think that is a very promising match. And talking to both teams, they both felt incredibly confident, incredibly good getting into it. So I'm excited, man. Super excited. I'm excited to, guys, don't miss a single moment of the action. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. CET is gonna be day number two for that bottom half of the bracket that we just checked out. You won't wanna miss a single minute of it, especially Tribe Gaming and A versus Navi. As you mentioned, I think that is a criminally close matchup. Yeah, there are a lot more though uh, to, to watch as well. So make sure you guys are there. Grind your points too. You know, you guys want your rewards on event.brawlstars.com. So make sure you are present because, you know, the rewards don't, they're not waiting for you. You have to actually, you know, get your predictions right and put your MVPs and do all the work to uh, bring them home. Well, that does it for today. I'm pretty satisfied with my predictions as well. I know you're particularly satisfied with yeah. your predictions as well. But, Teddy, <laughs> final thoughts for the day. We had some incredible stuff already. It's a good way to open the day, you know? I mean, EME on top and... Uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, it's a great way to, to open the day. We had mostly on the more one-sided uh, side of things uh, for, for our results. But I'm expecting closer matches tomorrow, and after that, it's going to be quarterfinals, semifinals, grand finals, and we'll know who our world champion is. Uh, such a great weekend for Brawl Stars. For me, the most exciting weekend of the year for Brawl Stars. Well, that does it for us today. Make sure you don't miss it tomorrow at 5 p.m. at CET. You should be here. We're going to be here, and we'll see you next time for more Brawl Stars World Finals. Result, but it's not gonna be enough. And Z Up and Chasmak have done it. Tapo, the killing block. Tails been used there by Joker, and he's too dirty. They say that caster shouldn't talk about the draft. Takes him down to yeah, man, and I mean even he's in. Oh! Does a quite court. What a blunder! Maybe gonna save it, but oh! never mind. All he has it. Gotta get out of the way of the tick mines. Well done, Mike. As well for Orca, green kill on the right side for Boss, too. Oh, but no, no time left. It's close. Low HP.